What's up guys, it's Sloth here and today we are doing something for season 5. But before you skip to the end of the video because you know it's a tier list, hold on for at least one second please, this is important. Season 5 is new, there have been no competitive games, there have been hardly any scrims, PTS had a variety of issues over the two weeks or roughly two weeks it's been online, so a lot of this is wild guessing. We'll give you a first feeling of where things could go, where some guards could be based on item changes, guard changes, map changes, and that's all that this is. You know, a first, first feel, first impression into the next season's meta. And as I say we, it's not only me, with me is Emilzi. Hi. Hello Duke, how are you doing? Wonderful, how are you doing? I'm good, just had a lovely sip of water, so ah, I like it, it. It was a refreshing sip of water, was it? It, it was a very refreshing <laughs> <laughs> I like I liked it. All right. Um, for those of you who don't know Emilzi, uh, can you give yourself a little introduction? Yeah, I was uh, the Obey support player uh, in season four. Right now, I'm currently a free agent. Hopefully, we'll have something announced by the, like soon. Um, well, achievements. I guess we won two splits and we won masters, and then we like got fourth place at Worlds, which was kind of bad, but uh, a third place, I guess. Yeah, that's me. I'm a competitive guardian. All right. And maybe something about the channels <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I have my own YouTube channel. You guys can go ahead and uh, give that a follow. It's over at youtube.com slash emilcy. Although right now the emilcy link doesn't work. It will work soon again. And that's pretty much just it, right? Yeah. I mean, you can plug the Twitch as well if you want. Oh, yeah. Twitch. Also, twitch.tv slash emilcy. I do like daily streams, mainly early mornings in Europe, Europe, European time. And that's like very late night for all you North Americans. Yeah. And in terms of uh, content, Emilzi does like, I would, I would say like a bit of gameplay, a bit of guides, a bit of info, especially around support. And I think you should definitely check it out. I, I'm watching his stuff to, to learn something about a role I don't play that often. And that's <laughs> the reason why I brought him here today as well, because I think he's got a bit more expertise in the field and it makes the whole thing a little less uh, blind guessing than if I was to do this on my own. And yeah, check him out. And with that, we can go into the tier list. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. We'll just go through them alphabetically and uh, whenever you have any idea of, of anything to say about guards, we'll do it. First one is Agni. I don't Acne. have much to say about Agni in the new meta. I think some of the items could benefit him. I think any guard that has high damage output potential as a mage and an escape is pretty well off with the new items. So I'd give him a decent placement, but that's all I got. I've actually seen Agni quite a bit in scrims and in like, I guess you can say highly competitive PTS casuals. I still don't think he's like broken, but I don't think he's bad either. Mm -hmm. So I'd say he fits very well around like the A. Yeah. That would be where I would put him. Mm -hmm. um, I think it like kind of defines A as well, right? It can kind of fit into pretty much anything. It, it probably won't be the best. It won't be the worst. If like your top mages are banned out, you can definitely go ahead and pick Acne and it will work out just fine. Yeah. All right. Put him in A. AMC, I'll give you the first one on this one. AMC is hard, right? Because I think AMC might have been really underrated and might even have been better than Ullur, uh, at least in competitive, which is a really bold statement. But he got hit pretty hard by the by the nerf to his hive. It was kind of his strength that he could be so safe and also have so much passive attack speed with it. So it makes him more unsafe, which is also his big weakness. So like making his weakness even bigger is definitely going to hurt him. So I would, uh, he, he's still a very, very good hunter and he, I definitely believe he'll be very potent, um, especially with Mage's Blessing procking on bees as mm. well. So I think I would go S- minus with AMC. I'm not sure how you feel about that. Mm, the question that I would have to add to that is what do you think about possible meta changes that may affect his performance? Because it's not going to be a solo dual lane as much anymore from what we've seen so far. Do you think that will have an impact on AMC too? I actually think AMC is like one of those uh, hunters in particular that does very well in 2v2 scenarios mm -hmm. just because he has so much AoE and uh, usually ability-based hunters tend to do better in the 2v2 scenarios because the Guardian can't really block AMC's uh, two or his, uh, his honey. Uh, I guess he can block this thing, all right? But yeah, is well, he's, right. AMC's still going to do his damage. Right. 
Okay, I, I like that. I like that analysis of that. And so I will just go with what you said here, the S minus. Yes, I would have yes, said S like minus. either S minus or A plus. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because it's kind of like it, it, for him, it's really a big question of how well will other hunters especially do in the new meta. And I think uh, in, in terms of itemization, uh, he's like early wise. Yeah, he's, you know, he's out there uh, late game. Others may just benefit more from the possible item chain, like item chains that we have so far, at least. And I think one thing that's going to hurt him a lot as well is I think assassins and like kill lane support guardians are yeah. going to have a, an easier time against an immobile guard early on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That will definitely hurt him. And I think um, in, in that sense also, big if, leaning out the window here, uh, if Teleria actually becomes staple on, on many junglers, then they will have a much easier time with ganks yeah. on him catching up to him and stuff like that as well. Exactly. All right. Oh, this is our in <laughs> interesting one. A push. Uh, uh, I personally think there's some some benefits for a push uh, in in the upcoming uh, season, uh, mainly related to the fact that, for example, Warlock Sash is gonna be stronger uh, stat wise. At least it's always a question of if if you wanna uh, invest into the stacking. But I think that's a benefit for him. But at the same time, I'm not sure if there's anything out there that will really change him. In terms of what he does and what his issues are. Yeah, I think a push is this really weird guard because against an unorganized team, he might just be the best guard in the game. <laughs> That's also why you seem like do very well in Joust 3v3. I hate playing against him there. Like Assault, he's probably the most annoying guard. Uh, but in a competitive environment, people are actually just going to buy anti heal and just run down their push, which is his big problem. I guess he just kind of dies if teams plays well around it. Mm -hmm. So I don't, it, at least for competitive, I don't really think he has his place. Like not, not much have changed. And if there's going to be a lot more assassins that are going to kill you a lot faster than let's say I could break in jungle would, I think he's going to struggle a lot more mm -hmm. in the meta. So I'd say like around B. I don't think he's completely useless. I think if someone has a really good approach, they could probably pull it off. Yeah. But in in general, I don't see him being like super strong at all. Yeah. No, B is fine. I... I would not put him any higher. I'm I'm not even sure. I was we'll see who end, ends up around B and C, uh, and yeah. then we'll have a better picture of who else, you know, kind of uh -huh, competes yeah. with him there. We can definitely uh, change things around as yeah. the video progresses and we kinda get a oh is this guard really better than this guard or whatever. Yeah. And we have Amaterasu. I mean, you used to play her a lot, so oh, yeah. tell still, tell us about her. <laughs> still do. I think Amy is this insanely strong uh warrior that has uh, her place in soul lane but i definitely think she excels in the support role i honestly thought she was going to be the meta at the worlds you saw pbm played her as well probably mm -hmm. play, uh, executed it better than i did but amatrasu is this really strong early fighter like there's no combination of guards that's ever going to beat amatrasu in a 2v2 scenario um maybe Bellona and like Thanatos, I don't know, something like that. But in, in general, if you if you're picking Amatrasu, you're picking her for pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think pressure is even better now, especially because you have so many 2v2 scenarios. And Amatrasu is this overall great guard that's always going to do her job. And I just I just think that like She's probably S or S minus in my opinion. I I I'm biased obviously because I, I say S guard. is bold. <laughs> I think it's bold, but I also think she'll see a lot of play. Uh, I think another strong argument is that I I strongly believe Sovereignty has the edge over Jade Emperor's crown right now, yeah. and that was one of the big problems for me at least with Warrior support was that well you couldn't build uh, Jade Emperor's crown, so why would you play Warrior supports which when Jade Empress was so strong, at least pre mm. uh, pre nerf. Right, right, right. I don't know how you feel about that. Do you feel S minus is too high? I definitely think. No, I, I would. I would have said S, S is too high, but I can see. I can see S minus. I would have thought A plus, um, but I think, speaking from the solo perspective as well, uh, a lot of matchups got a lot nicer for her with the removal of Death Toll. She could make use of it, but others made use of it much better. And when you have guards like, you know, Osiris and Erlang still having other ways of, you know, dealing the higher damage now with, with the Hunter's Blessing or whatever, but not having this insane sustain against her, then her sustain in return also becomes more valuable. And I think that's something that will help her as well uh, get through that early game 
in, in solo, which is kind of the important part there, and then transition into the late game where she has a bigger impact. So I definitely think uh, the meta helps her. Uh, mm -hmm. We just put her in S minus. That's between. Yeah. A I think I think with with minions doing is it forty percent less damage to guards now as well. It, that definitely makes her like she's really good at just out trading someone with just hitting your basic attacks. And I guess that could be a strat in soul lane. Mm -hmm. You just kind of man tank the wave and just hit the enemy uh, warrior, and you're actually going to do quite a lot of damage. Yeah. Okay, then we have Anher. Uh, one interesting thing that I noticed on PTS against Anher is Anher in the jungle is absolutely scary now because there are walls everywhere. So yep. when he impales you, you're in a wall afterwards for sure. And I think uh -huh. that actually has a massive impact for trading at least when he already has a lot of early aggression and he already has the, the buff with um, pushing so someone through minions dealing damage to, uh, to the minions now as well. So you can't block that anymore. Yeah, again, I think we'll see Anher a lot more this season. Uh, he does, as you mentioned, like he can actually be a very good jungler. Uh, we've seen Anher always does well with the crit build, even though he doesn't have a steroid, because he just hits so hard with his passive and his wand. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe that because we're going to see more 2v2 scenarios and early pressure actually matter a lot, and her kind of excels at this, with his lower cooldown ultimate as well being a thing. I strongly believe he'll be like around A, um, uh, uh, where before I'd probably place him like A minus. I mm -hmm. think like he might even be A plus now. I say place him in A for now mm -hmm. and see where we put the, the other hunters and then maybe put the, or like change it up. Yeah, yeah. I can definitely see that. I don't even want to talk about the next guard because he's been glitched all PTS. It's really <laughs> stupid. Like Anubis, as for those of you who don't know this, uh, Anubis had various bugs with with lifesteal interactions from first it, 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 for every tick he healed for uh, no first first it was actually working properly but then he suddenly healed for every single tick for the same amount no matter how many protections the enemy had and then now it's a multiplier with typhon's fang instead of ad addition so it's just like yeah i don't i don't know what to say about anubis anymore because it's just he's been busted for two weeks um uh -huh. and it's kind of like assuming that everything is fine now where would he be? <laughs> okay, so I think Anubis is very, it's going to be very player dependent. If someone has a strat build up around Anubis, sure, Anubis shirt could be like work out. But I think at least on a competitive level and like higher rank level, you're just going to see people pick up anti heal because mm -hmm. he's not, he's not CC immuning anti heal. It's still going to stay on him. And his big strength is that, oh, I can just out trade three people at the same time yeah. if I can stand down and life seals up right now. And I don't think that's going to be as potent. Yeah. Um, he's definitely going to do well in the 1v1 scenarios. You're going to see a lot more in mid because he has really high clear yeah. and like high kill potential all the time. And he's a big threat. So I'd say he's, I don't know, I would probably place him like B or C before, but I, I, I could agree with like giving him an A minus or a B now. I think if we place if we place Apoche in B, then Anubis should be A minus, because yeah. I see more yeah. potential for Anubis in the upcoming meta than than Apoche. Even though if a team commits on him, he'll still get blown up as as usual. And I mean his only his only safety switch with Aegis does a little less now as well. So that's something worth keeping in mind. But I, I would say A minus, and see how that works out. Yep, absolutely. So next up on the list. Ao Kong. Now, Ao Kong for me is really weird because Ao Kong is this medium ranked, like casual stomping guard, right? Hmm. Never really shined in competitive, at least this year. I think Johnny yep. played him. I, I like even someone like Adapting didn't play it, but loved the, loves the guard. Um, do you think he'll do well with the season five changes? I actually, I, I don't know. I'm not too sure about it because with assassins being better and like i could see something like a bestet or susano uh just kind of run him down and kill mm. out so the thing is <laughs> i've leaned out of the window with our kuang on my last tier list already um because he was actually doing really well in in high ranked as well uh towards the end of the season which was kind of surprising to me and i figured okay if he's really doing that well at like you know diamond plus level that there must be something to it uh and he didn't get anything at Worlds. So, um, 
I don't want to be biased towards him again. At the same time, there's a crazy amount of item changes that somehow affect him. Uh, mm -hmm. Just starting from like, you know, like the more obvious, like, you know, Spear of Desolation or um, the the rings that have been changed. Um, there's actually been a change to Spear of the Magos as well, which theoretically, if you want to play him like that, can affect him too. Uh, so there's a ton of item changes that could have an impact. But at the end of the day, Ao Kuang is still Ao Kuang, right? He's either going to go for a full burst build and and blow someone up and get out. And that's always been the same thing. And I don't think he's necessarily gotten better at that with like certain interactions being removed, like poly and stuff like that. Um, or we actually see a way where people make like, I don't know, hasten the Ao Kuang work completely <laughs> and roll over the opposition before they can do anything. But with a little bit of control, that's usually something that can be prevented. That was like back when that was a thing was when Magi's Blessing was... Uh, on a much shorter cooldown, I think. Uh, so, very different situation. I I would just put him in A and see what happens kind of thing. I don't think uh -huh. he's trash, uh, but I also don't think he stands out so far. Yep, I get you. All right. Okay, uh, next one is Aphrodite. Somehow, somehow, some people have the idea that for some reason Aphrodite is, is better this season. Uh, the strongest... Anti-heal relic, at least, got a buff that kind of indicates the opposite. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. I I don't see any potential. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think Afro as well is like, even Divine Ruin got buffed, right? So yeah. it's, it's really rough for her. And sure, maybe Afro is going to fare better against the Assassin's kill lanes. But at the same time, I, I, I just don't see why... Uh, Festet or Susan or whatever, like, or Rat or wh whoever it could be that gets potent couldn't just build brawlers and kind of run her down. Yeah. Um, where she, like, she couldn't kill guardians and sure she might do a bit more damage to assassins and like warrior supports or whatever. But her su sustain is still, I think, what you kind of pick her for. You, you pick her for the heals and you pick her for like keeping your carry safe. But I don't really think. Like, why would you do that if you could, like, pick, let's say, a hell support or I even think Ra mid, like, kind of outshines Afro in what she does. Yeah. All right. H how much credit do you give her in terms of tears? <laughs> mm, I'm not sure because I, I, I would feel bad placing her in a, uh, in, in, like, in a play like in the tier with Anubis, I know she can be really, really annoying if played well, but I don't think she deserves A either. So I would go A minus for now and kind of see how it develops. Yeah, I think that's as much as I would give her. I, I think I don't think she's A. Not with who we who else we have in A. I don't think Absolutely. she's like, uh, Agni nope. on her level. Yeah. Apollo. Hmm. Uh, I think Apollo is not the god that people will make him out to be because he's got a global ult, you know? Because that's always a thing. Like, the moment the map gets bigger, everyone's like, oh my god, global ults are going to be so good and they're going to be everything. Um, I think that can help. I think that helps him as a character. Um, Item-wise, yeah, he can kind of benefit, you know, from... I, I guess, oh, like, yeah. for example, earlier crit would be something that he can consider at least with the attack speed that he gets through his passive. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think he's like a little bit better off than before, but I don't see like crazy potential for him. Yeah, I think he's gonna be a bit better, but like I wouldn't place him with Anher. I think he's going to do well with crit. Like Apollo has historically also been a god that does very well with crit which is mm -hmm. kind of obvious right because he's yeah. this aa based guard and he has his passive which is like super strong you get free crits and you might kill someone um his old is going to be more potent now but you have to remember at the end of the day like the game is actually it it the whole the way the game plays right now is you're kind of like it takes you a while to get your second relic but like once you hit level 12 the game just like you get level 20 in no time and like Apollo has mana issues and it's not going to be like less mana issue. Uh, he's not going to be less mana hungry with the map being bigger. So I don't think he's going to have as much impact as people would like like to see him. Oh yeah, well Apollo can just ult over to the soul lane. Well no he can't because the map is so much bigger now. Like it, right. it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. I would go 
again, I've, I would, I think like just A minus might be the place to go, and yep. maybe we kind of have to swap around a bit. But I think for now, I don't see him being better than Anhar. Yeah, and like yep. those guards there. Yeah, I agree. Arachne. Arachne. <laughs> Arachne is always so awkward. You know, you've got a few niche players playing her. Um, she can always make use of changed items. Like, I mean, you could go crit Arachne if you wanted to, uh, even though her attack chain is kind of awkward for that. But at the end of the day, I, I think Arachne is still Arachne and nothing has really dramatically changed for her. Uh, as for like cam clear and stuff, she... She still, you know, she's got that problem that after the first camp where she drops her uh, uh, spiders uh, twice, she kind of slows down and clear compared to many other junglers, which is gonna suck in a meta where clearing as fast as possible is, is key. And exactly. yeah, that's all I can say. That's her big weakness, right? Besides the fact that, that she needs to get up close, it's just that her clear is actually very poor. You'd think that Arachne has very good clear, but she's just one of the slowest clears in the game. Like, I would argue that, let's say, a Fina jungle is definitely going to outclear Arachne. Even maybe like a Kabrakin with his free up. I don't know. I just think he's, she's, she's, she struggles. And for a guard that's like based to be this jungle only guard that can't even really clear her own buffs, I think she's going to have a harder time, honestly, which is kind of sad. Like, but I don't know. I, I would probably go B with Arachne. Yep. I respect that some players can play her, and I definitely think B also says, like, sure, you, if you can pull it off, you can pull it off, and it will be good. But I think she's the same as Aposh in that regard. Like, you'll see a few players that in the few, like, comps, uh, right compositions can pull it off, but not as a, like, standard pick that, oh, yeah, you can pick Arachne on side with, like, four or something like that. Yeah. What do you think about Ares as a support player? Ooh, Eris is really interesting right now because there is actually a lot of merit to going a lot more auras now with Phoebe as well, which kind of benefits Eris indirectly. Eris is also a good, um, a pretty decent laner, honestly. Once he hits level three, he can really put the pressure on if he's with a high clear ADC. So I think Eris is, for, for me, Eris is A. He's, mm -hmm. he's that constant threat of if you don't have beats, you are just going to die if it's a good player. And if it's in the hands of a good player, you're going to see that player hit a lot of chains, bait out a lot of abilities, and Ares is always a threat. He 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 is comp specific, absolutely, but he is also like there is. I think there is a place for him in in almost every uh, composition. So I'd I'd put him in A. I definitely think he's 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 gotten a bit better with the changes. Yeah, I can definitely agree on that. I will just quickly throw this in here uh, in terms of item support. Uh, support builds items. Uh, you made a video on that recently, right? Where you oh, talked yeah. about the aura items as well, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, I can highly recommend checking that out because uh, I think that that kind of, you know, explains a little bit where the whole aura thing with Ares right now is coming from because there are actually a lot of aura items that can generally be considered viable and that's always good for Ares considering his passive. Artemis. Absolutely. Absolutely. Artemis. I think Artemis is better off just because of the fact that she has built in crit and early deathbringer is just stupid. Like not first item, exactly. but early early deathbringer. Until that gets nerfed, which I'm expecting it will be, Artemis is in a very good place. Yeah, what By was it that Rex just said? That's Rex just said like Deathbringer is the only item you need or something after Devos. And like have you seen Artemis with Deathbringer early on, man? It's like fifty percent crit. Yeah. It's insane. She hits yeah. so hard. Especially with like guardians and even warrior supports. I even go Phoebes on hell. If they don't have that stacked and you have a Deathbringer, you're going to kill someone very yep. fast. And also <laughs> like with objectives being overall squishier right now, you are going to kill objectives very fast. And I think it really benefits her. I'd honestly put her above Apollo and like on the same way, way um the same tier as Anher. She needs a strong guardian like Savannah's, or uh, I don't know, maybe like a Capri or high pressure guardian to mm -hmm. make it work to help her through the early game. But she's very strong late game and she's even stronger now because crit is kind of her thing. She suffered a bit in the Kins meta, I'll say. Yeah. And I would I would put her in A now. I'm I, honestly I wanna lean out the window. See. I wanna I wanna take a risk here. I wanna I wanna put her even higher. I wanna put her A plus. <laughs> you wanna go A plus? And see what happens. Uh huh. I can. I, I'd get behind that. If if it fails, it fails. But I want to see what happens. 
Who mm -hmm. knows? At least if she ends up being S, then we weren't completely off. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. I think I think the interesting thing about Deathbringer, keeping the, like all the other things in mind as well, is that Deathbringer, as an early crit item, uh, also has a ridiculous amount of power, which still uh, benefits your clear too, which is one of Artemis' weaknesses. And if you consistently have high crits and even your abilities do a fair bit more damage through a single item that's not even meant to do that primarily, that's pretty good. <laughs> You're and, ab ab absolutely. And that, that clear pressure is another part that Artemis is usually not the best at, basically, but it alleviates that a little bit. Ardio. Ardio. Oh. I mean, there's more, like, anti heal is, is up and coming, I guess, and that's something uh -huh. that will affect her. Uh, I think that's the I'm main just, thing that affects her I'm, because. I'm, I'm just saying, have you, have you tried Ardio? I mean, Mage's I've tried Ardio with Mage's Blessing, if that's where you're it, going. <laughs> insane man yeah like, yeah that, that's what i was gonna say like off. on the other hand you, ha you have that anti heal but on the other hand you have her uh dealing insane amounts of damage for at least the first few levels uh over over most other gods and she can definitely hold her own in lane very well now like beforehand she was more of a like speaking about solo here but like she was more of a uh a survivor kind of type play style until yeah. a certain point and then she would come online but now you can actually play aggressive especially since uh, many others again don't have that pressure with death toll anymore uh she just sustains up and pokes again and procs mage's blessing twice where others proc at once so that's that's a lot and i think it in is... support the same thing kind of applies right if you play an aggressive support mm -hmm. style with her yeah, she, she can be super punishing. And again, I think having a lot of pressure now on Dio actually matters. And I think we'll see kill lanes as well. You might see Dio lanes run like Hercules, Thanatos or something. Just because getting buffs, like on, on like getting the first three or five, four red buffs, like the enemy team can't really do anything about that. Yeah. I think she has married to her as a jungler now. Uh, I mean, I think well. she always like did. She had, <laughs> she, yeah, she, she always did. But I think being a guardian... Uh, like a like a guard that can do very above average in my opinion mm -hmm. and maybe not in jungle but at least in solo and support i think she'll be a lot more seen a lot more in support now um and do so well and it makes her this flex pick which is super strong so i'd honestly say that we got our first escort here i think she's super strong we saw it at worlds as well she was super valued she hasn't really received any nerves mm -hmm. um her passive as well is MP5, right? Which is like a big yeah. struggle right now. Um, so I, I think I think she's S. That's where I, I would put Archo. All right. I would have said S minus, but but I'll, I'll follow you to the S. I like I like placing guards high and see what happens. <laughs> yep. Um, Athena. Uh, okay, Athena. One thing you know, if, when we're talking about all the global ults map getting bigger and stuff like that. That is unarguably a big benefit for Athena over most other gods mm -hmm. because she is not dependent on any <laughs> range, any mana or anything. She just goes across the map whenever she wants to. And exactly. Actually, like, I think she's been very, at least by me, she's been very underrated before Worlds and we've seen what she can do in a competitive mm -hmm. environment. So I think she's pretty good. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to agree with you, like, definitely, I think. Athena is like again she might even be played solo now because she doesn't get that out pressured or punished because death toll warriors are going to be less of a thing mm -hmm. she's definitely a good jungler I think she'll be a sick jungler now like she has very very strong clear yeah. with the uh, assassin's blessing um she's a, definitely going to be a good support as well the good the best thing about Athena is you have that constant pressure the enemy always has to to keep a like a, that fault in the back of their heads can Athena old over? Let's say you're going for the for like a red invade and Athena's doing your back camps. You can always old over. She can always efficiently out farm you. You always have to worry about her dash taunting around the corner. So I think it makes her really strong. I I I might go as high as like S minus just because I think she'll be a really strong jungler. Yep. And she does not have that clear early on anymore with Mage's Blessing. She actually has really good clear. Yep. Sure, Reach doesn't proc it anymore, but it like it's a it Mage's Blessing is an item that really benefits her as well. It gives you like what you want on her. I, I was gonna say like the the fact that Reach doesn't proc magical things anymore is just probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That was yeah. insane. I mean, I did some stupid things last season with um, 
with Soulstone and that that wasn't even okay. So it's like, no, was it Soulstone? No, oh, wait, no, with a sorry, with Vamp Shroud, like with a double Vamp Shroud proc on the on the basic. So, oh, no. uh, I, I if that was the thing for for the new uh, Mage's Blessing as well for like the rest of the season, that would have been brutal. But yeah, as minus is something I can I can definitely see. Mm -hmm. A Willish. Everyone thinks a Willish is so much better because she has Suku for the extra movement speed. Uh, yeah. As somebody who's played her a lot, I don't think that will impact her that much. Uh, reason being that A, if Talaria becomes an actual thing, then everyone will be kind of fast. And in some point you just hit diminishing returns with speed buff and Talaria. Uh, and then there's not much benefit. B, the camps themselves are still not that far apart. So walking from one camp to the other and using Suku in between is still something that burns a lot of mana over time, uh, an issue that she always had. And overall, I think nothing in particular that she brings to the next meta uh, that she didn't have before or that she didn't bring to it before. She's still that obvious situational counter and she still works well with setup or if you can position yourself well with her own setup, but it's nothing that drastically changed for her, I think. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that might benefit her is that assassins uh, like definitely have more merit to them now. So if you're going to see a lot more best death, if you're going to see a lot more, I also kept obviously, but mm -hmm. like if you're going to see more jump assassins, maybe even someone can pull off a Bacchus or a Hunbats as well. But like, I don't know. I think I'm I'm like B or A minus. I don't know where to put yeah, her. A minus I, like, I think is fine. I mean... Also keeping in mind the rank population here a little bit, but uh, I think A minus is uh, is where she is. I mean, at least for Bastet, it's not even that valuable uh, because you have to pull her on the way back from her jump. So mm -hmm. otherwise she jumps back anyway. So yeah, that's a good kind of kind of wonky in that regard. And I think we're gonna no, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, uh, Bacchus first. Tell us about Bacchus. <laughs> Bacchus. Ooh, Bacchus is very interesting. He finally got his uh, buff. Uh, pre-worlds that he's mm. kind of been waiting for for a very long time you can actually now drink wine at a reasonable price it's almost like germany <laughs> <laughs> got him um i've i have a hard time believing bacchus will be meta because bacchus do does not really have early pressure in duo bacchus m arguably has one of the best ultimates in smite if he hits it like on a lot of people um, but at the end of the day, Bacchus is still Bacchus and he needs that those mid-game fights and he needs to do more in those late-game fights. And I think just as we've seen other Guardians and like even like Hell supporter, Amaterasu support been like introduced, he just doesn't do what he's best at better than other Guardians, which is those big mid-game team fights and like being very useful for setup in the late game, being tanky. So I, I don't see him being better with any of the changes as well, honestly. Like mana he still has mana problems after all. Uh, and and you you are ma very mana hungry now in the early game. So I think uh, I would put back his like A minus right now, which is very sad because I definitely think he was an A guard before, but I just think his pressure is going to matter so much now. And he doesn't really shine for the first three or four levels, in my opinion at least, compared to other guardians. I'm I'm gonna have a hard time placing him in A. Yeah, I I agree. I uh, was thinking along the lines of A minus or B as well. And I mean, somebody in the comment section is gonna tell us how we're playing him all wrong, and he's actually supposed to be played as a assassin <laughs> mage in jungle, and that's Absolutely. why that's why we're not doing it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have a meta that favors him. But I really I feel like at this point. <sighs> Outside of his ultimate, you know, he's got the knockup, which is somewhat predictable, somewhat not the biggest setup out there because, you know, it's somewhat avoidable compared to other CC. His three is super easy to interrupt and his ultimate, you know, it's a, it's a one trick pony kind of thing. And I don't know what, what he would need to change that. What he, like, if like, for example, if he got a massive, massive damage, base damage increase for early levels and got the pressure out of it, if that would make him a more more viable pick overall or what else he would need. But as it stands now, I think others just do the support job at least much better. Yeah. I think like one really cool tweak they could do to Bacchus is maybe add like a slow on attack speed slow to his free, even when mm -hmm. it's not like, when it's like not tipsy. 
because yeah. it's not going to be relevant regardless it's just going to be a very nice like early game buff to him that's mm -hmm. going to help him out a bit that's where he struggles and it's not even going to affect him late game because you want to stay super smashed anyway right yeah yeah no i, I can see that I, I think that would definitely be an interesting approach to to uh tackle his issues mm -hmm. uh talk about issues then we have a god that had issues oh, yeah. for the longest time and that's bakasura i think throwing this out there i think this meta out of the ones we've seen in a long time is going to be the one that favors Bakasura the most. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's going to make him like broken or top tier or anything, but I think at least he's got a bit of a shot in terms of very like clear, heavy play style, um, roaming around the jungle quite quickly, just basically farming as much as possible on cooldown to get his items online to, to get something going. Mm hmm so even as a jungler, I, I think he can be a soul laner. If we go back mm -hmm. in the day and remember someone like Celia yep. in this meta where the jungler would not play around soul lane that much, which was basically season four, the jungler just stayed around soul lane, right? Mm -hmm. Never really ganked you. If you get pressure in solo with someone like Bagasura and you're like able to uh, invade that back camp and get the enemy soul lane as blue buff and really become this big bully and make the enemy warrior useless, I think that could be a very strong strat, and I think we will see someone like maybe Celia, someone else might pull that out. I could see like Divius as well, right? In an mm -hmm. A, he might pull out the the back of Zero. So like, it's exciting. Where would you put him? I, I might go big balling here and just put him in A. Honestly, I don't know. All right, how I like you it. I would have said A minus, but I like it. I, I want to see where this goes. Because I I <laughs> think that if people get good at back of and get good buff rotations in gets to like learn and understand um how he how he like works yeah. uh in, in team fights and like how he can out trade anyone is kind of very strong like his true damage is, again like he's going to be melting supports early on if they're going on the feeps mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's going to be melting objectives i think he still struggles in team fights but you can bit push a lot more on this map and i he's not the worst in a 1v1 scenario either <laughs> that's, so that's a bit of an understatement <laughs> He's pretty, he's pretty all right. He <laughs> kind of just runs you down. It's like it's like Nemesis on, yeah. on steroids. Yeah. Okay, Bastet. Bastet, I think, Ooh. is one of the... I mean, we can't really say... Uh, if we look at Worlds, she did pretty well at Worlds, but she did well in the hands of one player. So uh, how much that says about the guard in itself is another question. But I think uh, with the upcoming season, she's definitely one of the up-and-coming guards. Uh, not only... like fast rotations obviously fast uh fast clear um the fact that you can actually if you want to uh build transcendence in jungle and it's somewhat of a reasonable decision not necessarily as uh, as first item after boots but you still get the cdr you get a decent amount of power if you already have mana and bastet and trends go hand in hand basically so i think there's a lot of things that she has going for her mm -hmm. I, def I definitely agree uh, very strong, like in this assassin meta as well. She's going to be even stronger, right? Because her big strength is like wanting, like using your pounds. You can even just pounce in and pounce out, and you do so much damage. And against lower health targets that are like non guardians, it's going to be a lot better as well. So I think best it. Like you could go high and say S minus, you could also just go for the safe bet and say A plus, in my opinion. But I think with how Varishil played her uh, her at Worlds, and I like think with how good players will be able to like efficiently use the one and stuff to farm with jumping over walls and stuff, I think she could see an S minus yeah. um, placement. I I'll, I'll agree with that one. And I think uh, what's also interesting, by the way, is I think most guards, like for most guards, the uh, the jungle starter item, the assassin's blessing, uh, you know the. The 10 pen is just like the icing on yeah. the top kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But for Bastet, pen is like, sure, it's valuable for everyone, but for her, it's super valuable. Uh, exactly. And as such, I think that's also a strong benefit. You know, you get an item that helps you so much early on because you want to get to that pen cap, ideally. Mm -hmm. Bologna. Bologna struggles a little bit in the regard of death toll, uh, or maybe more than a little bit. Um, she was one of the warriors that previously, you know, would run aggressively into uh, the enemy solo at level one, hit them with a bludgeon, hit the wave, and 
pull the wave together and clear it all at once and uh, basically not lose, he lose health by popping a pot and uh, having death toll. That's not going <laughs> to happen anymore. No. Uh, at the same time, if she goes Assassin's Blessing, uh, sorry, a Hunter's Blessing, they look the same, so it doesn't matter, um, <laughs> then she will get bonus damage for every AoE cleave. And yep. that's something that's worth keeping in mind at least because that's a fair bit of bonus damage and can help the clear. It's just not as safe. Mm -hmm. I think Belona's biggest problem is that she just gets outshined by the likes of Kukulan, the likes of Osiris, and Guardians do more than her late game. Mm -hmm. Her big plus what I can outpressure out you every time and you can't, what are you going to do about it, you know? Uh, but then Osiris came back and then like Kukulan happened and now Death Toll is kind of dead, so... I would still say she's an A guard just because Bellona is always going to be very solid and yeah. it's always going to fit in. But I don't see her going high, higher than that. I don't want to put her in A minus, but I think no. she's like low A. Yeah, I, 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 I would definitely say uh, A is where I would put her as well. Mm -hmm. No high or low. <sighs> Kabrakan. I have no Ooh. idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm so clueless as well, right? Because Kabrakan was this powerhouse guardian that did very well with like uh especially for us on bay and like uh elevate <coughs> sorry elevate as well because uh, you could play squishier supports with it you could play physical supports with it i know that is plays like nasha whatever i uh nox i play hell i amy uh and kabragan does a ton of damage he's very very good late game Guardians were very strong in season four if built hybrid. But is that the case still? And of that, I'm not sure. I mean, the big issue with hybrid right now is that you probably, especially protections wise, you end exactly in that frame where you don't want to be, like below the threshold for Obsidian and for Titan's Bane, for them to reach, or like around the threshold where they reach their max pen, but you don't go above that. So you're like at the most awkward place of the curve when you build yeah, hybrid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that I think is a, a big issue for Kabrakan because if you build Kabrakan full tank, he's probably going to be a bit lackluster. He probably mm -hmm. won't have the impact that he otherwise would. If you build Kabrakan full damage, you can you can make a YouTube video about it, but yeah, <laughs> um, don't, don't. it's not really going to be something that you, know, you would see uh, in a competitive environment. So... Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what he, where he would fit in. I I, I don't see him as support. I, I don't see him as a as a good jungler and I don't know what he would do as a solo. That's actually true. Like uh, maybe you could do like some proxy strategies with the free. Mm -hmm. We could I would place him in A, but you could go even lower and just kind of call it cuz I think you like you have a very good point and take on top of that that uh Sustain is becoming better. He's hard to build like the Vine on, and also yeah. Warlock Sash is going to be a lot of a bigger thing yeah. in uh, season five as well for mages. Mm -hmm. And he that's what he did, right? He kind of one shot mages. Yeah, yeah, he won't yeah. do that anymore. And like, if he will do, he'll sacrifice a lot and he'll just get crit three times and die. I'm trying to think if there was like, I don't know, if you could just build like pure sustained CDR tanker break and like early stone of Gaia into just CDR and protection items and, and maybe just annoy the hell out of the enemy team. But that's about it. Like, I, I think if, if that's the case, it, why wouldn't you just go for something like Nike that actually yeah, provides yeah, something? Yeah, very true. But, right? Uh, like, which also, she's a pretty decent poker as well. She actually kind of hurts. Yeah. So yeah, I don't okay. know. I, 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 think minus, I, I think A minus is, uh, yeah. is the call. and uh, Which is kind of crazy because I, I would consider him S before like mm -hmm. pre worlds that yeah. would be my mindset so he's a very big drop but yeah. i think it's justified by the arguments we just had camazots i think camazots considering the place he's been in before is probably a bit better off he has um solid jungle clear like not the best jungle clear but shouldn't underestimate that uh he's got the cleave in his basics as well right third hit so, yeah. So that's always nice. If you have cleave on a jungler, that's always something that will that will uh, help. He's also 
still or maybe more than before has the possibility to go uh, solo so mm -hmm. i think he's a bit better off i don't know he's like crazy good though i would i would just put him in a right like mm -hmm. he's gonna do the thing he does well well still like he's gonna blink in get some good damage off has the potential to like run down the adc and just kill the adc mm -hmm. Uh, he's going to be a bit better because buffs are going to respawn more often. Therefore, he's going to get his passive off a, a lot more. Yeah. He's still like he still kind of just feels useless at times, and therefore I don't think you can go over A. But I don't think you can go under A as well because he's one of those guards that just kind of fit into every team comp. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll just go with A. I'll, I'll take that. Oh. Oh no. Okay, t tell me a story about this guy, ah. Severus. <laughs> so I've played this guard four times. And I've had my brains <laughs> I, I, out every I, I single I've time I've played that. him. <laughs> I, okay, I, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a statement here that's unrelated to where he's placed. I don't uh -huh. like playing Severus. To me, he uh -huh. literally feels like a like a budget uh Xing Tian kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, he feels very clunky, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's my biggest problem with him. Is he his kit is pretty cool, but it feels clunky to use. Yeah. Uh, Severus. Uh, I don't see him being a guardian uh, in the support role. No, I just don't no, think no, he no. brings enough. He's Definitely a solo not. laner. Yeah. And if I ask myself the question, would I rather have a Severus or Xing Chang or a Sobek or like I don't know any like other decent guardian, maybe even a Mir Terra? I don't know on my team. I would always go those guardians over Cerberus. Yeah. And I don't think you're going to see a lot of games in ranked as well where like, oh yeah, Xing Chang, so big first ban. Haha, -ha, have fun picking Cerberus. You know? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think just, the key benefit that he that he has uh, in that regard is that he has pretty solid sustain. And yeah. uh, that's something that, you know, will probably be more valued now. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. But I feel like his whole kit is this kind of like nice idea that doesn't really work out unless you execute it perfectly with like slowing them and shredding their protections at a certain distance and going further away to hit the stun on the one at the full time and that's that and then you're still kind of you know that's where you're done that's where your kit's over outside of the ultimate so mm -hmm. uh and I wouldn't give him A I think I would I'll, I'll go A minus yeah I would say he's worse than some other guards in A minus, but not as bad as B tier guards. Yeah. Kernunos. Agreed. Ooh. Hmm. I have he's, not seen a single Kernunos on <laughs> PTS at all. No, me neither. He's interesting, right? Because he he if let's say there's a situation where you run out of mana, he's going to do better than a lot of other hunters just because of his one, right? Mm-hmm. He has decent pressure in lane. I wouldn't pick him over like I say like when I when I'm thinking pressure and do I'm thinking Ulra, I'm thinking Hachiman, I'm thinking AMC, those kind of all in guards. Yeah. Maybe even like Hoyi. Uh I don't think he he brings that. He's in a very weird spot. I think he'll be better now. Because one thing he does very well is like soloing objectives. Because mm -hmm. you can just kinda of stand there and slap it in your life field stand. Mm -hmm. That was a strat we used a lot on Obey. We actually played like a Kern a lot more than other people. Mm -hmm. I think he's still like solid. I, I would I would still go A with Kern. I think yeah. he fits into pretty much every comp. He doesn't really shine and like, oh yeah, he's super good at this, but he doesn't really have that super weak point either. Like he's yeah. relatively safe. He is going to do his job in team fights. He has a pretty goddamn strong ult if he manages to land it correctly, which I guess might be his strength. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't see him being like above A, but I don't really see him being on, under A as well. Yeah, I agree with that. I think an uh, interesting point for him is also that uh, he's not the best hunter with crit for sure, because he doesn't have mm -hmm. like, you know, the kind of level of steroids that would help crit. Um, but at the same time, he's also not the worst hunter with crit either. Uh, because, for example, he could literally, if he wanted to, he could skip lifesteal because he has it in his kit theoretically and mm -hmm. go into crit right away if you want to do something crazy with that. Uh, like you know like boots x to crit or something um who knows <laughs> like there, there's always these hurt. flex options due to how his one works but yeah just just like kind of like uh, jack of all trades king of none kind of thing mm -hmm. and that brings us to uh 
Somebody recently got a got a buff that uh, went a bit under the radar Ooh. so far. Yeah, and that's, that's well, that was a strong buff, man. That was a big buff, and I that think that buff, buff. Uh, could actually give him. I, I ask you this one actually. I'm, I don't think I, I'll ask you. Do you think it will give him some support value? Uh, I think he's he might be good in what I'll call kill lanes. Mm -hmm. He's going to be very hard pressure early on. Yeah. I think if you're picking Chuck support, uh, you're kind of going for an all-in play style. Mm -hmm. So you could see teams do that. I don't doubt we'll probably see like one or two Chuck support games. I'll call it now. <laughs> but I would not, like, he falls off even with the, as, at least in a support role, right? Like then you'd want a Guardian solo or something. Mm -hmm. um, it could work. I think he's a pretty decent solo in right? Because he has his yeah. passive which is like deemed as pretty useless, but it might actually play a pretty significant role now. Really, really good sustain. And one thing people like forget is that you can't beat an attack speed slow, or you can't like beat anti-heal, right? Yeah. Uh, not that he has that, but it's those kind of effects. So like ADCs are not building that much attack speed right now because they're kind of going triple crit, crit or whatever. Yeah, or yeah, like, yeah. Uh, uh, Titans double crit so it's definitely going to play a really big role and yep. i think he he might be a he could be a plus but with his history i i don't want to put him there mm. if that makes sense but yeah. i definitely think yeah. he'll be a solid pick i yep. think he'll he has a lot of merit to him now i think i think the really nasty thing that that a chuck could do now if he like decides to in in a, in a team fight not dash in is literally like uh x the adc and just drop the rain there just yeah. in, in hopes of like, for example, if the if the ADC goes Wind Demon in the hopes of getting a, the attack speed up that way later, because you know, when you have a ridiculous amount of crit chance, that's kind of likely, but then you get your attack speed slow beforehand already. So it's harder mm -hmm. to even get to that one crit that you need. Uh, that could be pretty nasty. And I think that that's def there's definitely potential there. So I think mm -hmm. A, is, A is good. And I would not be surprised if we see him move higher than A eventually. Yep, I agree with that. Changa. Um, Side note has actually been picked up and tested in, in jungle a bit more again because of uh -huh. the fact that she doesn't have to back and there's so much farm on the map and I think it's interesting. I've tried it. I uh, kind of tried Warlock's staff at the same time and that was not the best idea. But <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, we actually were one of the teams that in Spring Split played Changa uh, jungle. Mm -hmm. um, she She's not a bad jungler if you can kind of get a good save early game. Yep. I think she does pretty well into assassins as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she could also become like a mid laner because she does pretty well in the 1v1. And if she's left alone, she just kind of send her bunny back and buy things, especially with like into the later game where the goal spawning is so high that you kind of want consistent backs all the time. Yep. Um, I don't want to go higher than A, but I think she, she can be like played. And mm -hmm. I think she's always going to be a decent pick. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't see why you would pick uh, Changa or like Ragin or I don't know, Discordia and Mid. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, or Janice uh, even. Uh, but I, I think like she's A. She, she can't. I think some, some players are going to try it, pick it up. I'm thinking even the likes of Chario might really like this support kind of style mm -hmm. he's jungler now. Um, maybe Dardis is going to do something crazy. Maybe Twig is going to bring it back. Who knows? But I think we'll see it. And that's why I'm going to give it A, yep. honestly. I agree. And I think there's some interesting item changes to at least uh, look out for that are relevant for her as well. So, for example, like, you know, the, the typical thing is that you would just go Obsidian Shard on Changa. But mm -hmm. with Spear being buffed and her, like, in later stages of the game, spamming abilities quite frequently, you can mm -hmm. actually keep those Spear stacks up quite easily. And I think that's going to be interesting too. Like, just... Uh, the shred that you can basically get from that because the, it's so viable at just like two stacks right now. And uh, with her in-out trading style kind of thing, you know, she's barely an all-in character compared to others. Uh, I think there's, there's potential in that as well. We'll see how else mm -hmm. you can do with that. Yeah. And then we have Chiron. Chiron. Um, Chiron is this really weird guard. He has a really good ult. He has a really good base movement speed. Decent sustain, but he just feels he's he doesn't feel like an ADC. Um, crit build is definitely not favoring him. You're yep. probably still gonna see people go like some transcendence ability based build on him, but I just think he'll get outshined by other ADCs 
uh, I don't know. I have a hard time seeing good old Mr. Chiron being meta, especially like again, especially with crit being so potent right now. I think so, I, I think know. if anything, uh, it will be more likely that we go back to the days of seeing uh, Chiron mid. Um, yeah, Chiron yeah, mid like... with uh, with Mage's blessing, mm -hmm. decent early pressure, uh, yeah. not not terrible, and then you know going going into a relatively early transcendence and just like loading up on power and pen and uh, mm -hmm. trying to one shot people with ult basically. <laughs> yeah, but I, 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 I still think that. that's more of a niche case and not mm -hmm. the norm. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking player like Yam yeah, and mm -hmm. oh, Veneno played it as well, yeah. right? He had that land where he just carried it on Chiron yeah, uh, yeah, five yeah. games straight at the gauntlet. Uh, I, I would go A-. minus. Yeah. I don't see him contesting Kern and Anher, but I think he's kind of on the same level, level as Apollo. You still see people play him. Yeah. Might degrade him to B, but I think A- minus for now. Just because he, he always kind of... He still does his job, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he still does his damage. Kronos. I think... Some item changes helped him, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if the meta as a whole really helps him, or I wouldn't see where. Mm -hmm. uh, his passive, first of all, I think gets worse because I think the not that it matters too much, but the game time, average game time is probably gonna drop quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. He's gonna be harder to play now because you're gonna see a lot more burst in the meta, so you'll have to be a lot more careful with like how you use your ult and stuff because you, you're you not playing against triple guardian that's kind of going to kill you over 10 seconds and you can get your perfect ult off. You're going to be playing against burst assassins and like uh, maybe even burst mages like Hebo, Changa in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to play against a tank, uh, Osiris or a tank, I don't know, Capracken. So yeah. mm, I think he's, I would say he might still be A to me, just because he can be played in mid. Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of damage. We can't forget that. He's kind of going to shrek towers now that they have lower protections as well. Mage's Blessing is also a very, very good on Cronus. Yep. That's one item change that uh, definitely did good for him. He can get pressure and do, is one thing I want to like mention as well, especially with Mage's Blessing. So I, I'll, I'll go A. Mm -hmm. I'll expect the likes of like maybe Imelito, who is a very well-known Cronus player, right? He's the Cronus player, the energy Cronus skin, could probably pull it off uh, and play very, very well with it. But I don't see him being like better or worse. He's still going to be a situation, situational guard, but in those situational like scenarios, he's going to be, to be so good that I'll have to like put him in A. Okay, right. I go with that. We gotta have to speed it up a little bit, so we just yeah. leave it right there. Cocoon, definitely not the worst after these changes. Um, though I think he also, I, I don't see where, like he's got the insane pressure still. I don't think that has changed, mm -hmm. but I don't quite know if there's anything that has positively changed for him drastically compared to before. He was just really good beforehand already. Yeah, I think for, for Kukulun, what he does well is that, again, mana is a problem early on right now, mm -hmm. and he doesn't take mana. Uh, his items are kind of still the, the same. I think he'll do good in a crit meta because he can just build spectral armor and kind of still run down the ADC. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would honestly put him in S- minus yep. still because I think yep. he, he does his kind of the same i would yeah. put him in s at worlds but i don't think he's going to be that good yeah but he's still a very good guard that yeah. you kind of want to whenever you can definitely cupid uh i i think we can make this one quick i don't think there's much of a benefit for cupid in this season that wasn't there last season he's not a favorable character for for crit builds either uh -huh. um or at least not in the top favorable ones and yeah that's I it kind of so either mm -hmm. i i just think throw her down and be right yeah. Some players yeah. can play well with it, but it's just kind of how it goes. Yeah. Daji, I overrated her a little bit last time. I thought she was <laughs> super strong and competitive as well. She was played once where she did well, but she was not a, a band a few times, but she was not a favorite pick. So I'll leave this one to you. Uh, Daji kind of struggles clear speed wise, in my opinion as well. Like her level one is really bad. Mm -hmm. Um definitely gonna be strong now also she was strong with like some of the item changes i just see her as, as an a in my opinion like mm -hmm. she just does her job she's the it's like Aries. she's the constant threat if you don't have beats or immunity i'm gonna kill you yep. i can also burst someone but if you play well around it i'm gonna be really useless 
so AA in my opinion fits in pretty much any comp, but it's not like insane in particular. It's 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 average, right? Mm -hmm. Discordia probably not average. <laughs> Now, I think the strongest thing about the Scordia, at least what we valued, was the passive. Mm -hmm. If you can get that 10 extra power in dual lane, and that means you're going to win that 2v2 fight, it's just insane. That's what we we do all the time. We'd run Amaterasu in the Scordia. Mm -hmm. And what, what are you going to do about it, right? Because you yeah. have uh, Amy running at you with the Scordia passive at level 1. Uh, I think that's going to be have even more merit to it now. Like, and I would, I would like to add better. that um, one of the stronger parts of, of the Scordia's kit, aside of that, is her clear as well. She doesn't have the best clear, but her, her clear comes online relatively quickly, and exactly. especially with Mage's Blessing, that's a, a huge deal. And with the uh, mid lane actually being more of a, well, singular lane for the most part now, a solo lane for the most part, um, that benefits her obviously as well, because she can do whatever she wants afterwards. Yeah, she's going to do a lot of damage to jungle camps. I think I would go, I would honestly go S minus, yep. because I do believe I have something with the drum drum yeah even like <laughs> after the nerf he's still gonna be up there yeah and i i, I think she says minus yeah erlang shen takes the hit with death toll for sure um mm -hmm. does he have anything to make up for it i think so honestly i think you can see erlang in kill lanes and do lane i've mm -hmm. been trying some crazy builds myself where i go like honda's blessing and just have i max my one and just kind of run people down mm -hmm. I don't see it working out in competitive, but it's kind of funny to do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Erlang is a really underrated jungler. Uh, I, I see him as this kind of Ravana where, oh yeah, sure, Ravana is a warrior class, but you don't see him. You see him as an assassin, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. the majority of people do. I think you can build uh, Exekins yeah. uh, Erlang and do a ton of work. And he has really good buff clear as well. Which I, is think, one. I think I agree with that. I mean, I, I used to uh, run him a lot and uh notably that i'm not the best jungler and i still qu found quite a bit of success with him but at the same time uh you you still have the uh downside of if you go for that kind of build and you get picked out you get absolutely mm -hmm. destroyed because yeah exactly. you're gonna be dead before your ult even runs through so a a yeah i yeah. think he's good but he's not like the bully anymore for sure mm -hmm. um fafnir Gonna Ooh. nerf. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, like I don't think it's the stun duration that's the OP thing about this hammer. It's the slow, it's the AoE slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just absolutely insane. We still have to remember his hammer didn't change. Well, I guess it changed in the, the one form, or was it the three? So his combo is not three seconds anymore, it's like 2.7 mm -hmm. if you don't have CCR or, or your DR. Um, so I, I still think Fafnir is this insane god that just has way too many random stats thrown on him. He has protections and gold on his passive. He has heal and buff. Like, he always has two things, like one unnecessary thing. Yeah. In, in competitive, he's just always going to do his job. I, I still think Fafnir is up there, and I would put him in S+. Plus. I think he's better than Nacho. I think he's... He's going to be really, really good with Ors as well. Cause what, mm -hmm. And even, even Pyfax, right? Like... The thing with Fafnir is you don't really die. So the more auras you can build for your team, the better. You see yeah. a lot of Fafnir players are going to go like for like sustained builds with Gaia or they're going to go for like Shoguns or something because they know I don't need to be tanky because I can just damage immune and I have passive protections. I would go S+. All right. That's uh, it's a bold call. I would have thought uh -huh. around S, but uh, I'll put him there and we'll see yeah. how things it's, develop. It, he's he's going to struggle a bit early on for sure mm -hmm. but if you can get past that little, like level to level five you're basically going to be doing more than any other guardian in most scenarios in uh, my opinion i least. mean realistically uh if the guardian ends up staying a lot in duo that's also super beneficial for him because mm -hmm. his steroid is best suited for an adc and he constantly you... heals himself up so exactly. that's also something that just helps him though Mm -hmm. And he's, we, we can't forget that even though they nerfed his 2, his 2 is actually better early on now. It's 15 yeah, yeah. instead of 10. Yeah. So, works out for him, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Fenrir. Honestly, Ooh. I mean, everyone thought that after his, his buffs, he was like that insane monster. Didn't really turn out that way. He was, you know, picked a little bit here and there. I think he's, he's you know, he's a niche pick, but 
Uh, again, one of those gods where I think the new meta doesn't necessarily favor him. And especially uh, one of the things with Fenrir was that many of the builds that, that were used on him were like kind of Bruiser style and Bruiser builds aren't that beneficial anymore. Mm -hmm. So I would yeah. probably place him A maximum. I would go A minus because yeah. I think yeah. his only help. role, like sure he could be a Stomp jungler, but like we saw him pick that was as well. Didn't really work out for adapting when he pulled it out. Yeah. It wasn't as influential pick. Yeah. Uh, as it was last worlds as well. A minus might have married in support dual lane kill lanes, but I don't know. Yeah. Freya. Oh god. Freya is one of those guys where lifesteal items are very interesting. <laughs> we have a certain I mean, the thing is that um the fangs, the fangs don't work with, with internal lifesteal, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. They only work with item lifesteal. Otherwise we see some crazy things. We've seen some crazy things on PTS. But I'm pretty sure they wouldn't work anymore now after the changes to the item. So um, I don't know what she does without that. I think, I think Freya is really strong right now because there's this item called Honda's Blessing yeah. that just makes her power spike come online pretty much very, very like earlier than before. Mm -hmm. Um I I would go as far as going S minus with Freya because from what I have seen and what I've spoken to from other pros, there is a general consensus that she might be slightly overtuned with Hunter's Blessing. Oh yeah, that's, that's well. interesting. She, I've, she I've, is uh... super scary. She has very good pressure at level one with her two with the extra damage on it now. Mm -hmm. um, she she's gonna be scary. You're gonna see a lot more Freya at least in high level end play. Mm -hmm. uh, her ult always does a ton of damage. Oh, yeah. Good setup. I would go as mine. Again, bold statement. It's from what I've seen, from what I've heard. Uh, I think she's going to be up there. All right. All right. I, uh, that's the first pick where I'm, I'm very surprised. Uh -huh. Like, that's the first one I yeah. did not expect at all. Um, mostly due to the fact that the Hunter's Blessing still only procs on, on one target anyways, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't yeah, yeah. get it on the AoE proc. Um, but yeah, she doesn't ha really have much much damage otherwise to begin with. So I can, I can see where it's coming from. Um, yeah, we'll put it as minus and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ganesh. Ooh. So, I'll, I'll, I'll give the next both to you because they're both supports. Uh huh. Okay, Ganesh. Very interesting, especially with this new mechanic right now, uh, with how like splitting works. Someone tried to explain to me today. I got very confused. But like, if you give the last hit now, you split evenly, golden experience wise. That's how I like it works out with Ganesha passive now. It's super weird, but I think he's okay. also strong. I, I have some weird interaction someone told me about and tried it out. Um, Phoebe's huh. Guardian's Blessing, he's gonna have an easier time stacking these. He, Ganesha is again, he's a good aura guardian. Uh, he's not the strongest, he's like an average guardian for level one. I don't see him being any over A, I think he was really strong. Uh, going to worlds like a plus s minus mm -hmm. but he's not good at level one he, you can't put him anywhere that makes him like really strong so i'd, I'd just go like a with uh, him. how come Solid you, you don't uh, you don't value his level one clear at least mm, I, I think one one thing is clear right like sure it goes through uh but one thing is also like the slap potential before yeah and i don't see ganesha just going up and denying the enemy uh carry like adc to hit the wave because what are you gonna do you're just gonna stand there with your attack chain because yeah sure ganesha has an attack <laughs> chain because why not that's really <laughs> silly um He's okay again. I think he's average for clear. Mm -hmm. uh, you, it's not the guard you pick if you want clear. It's the guard like you pick to round off a comp or if any uh, like the other like top things uh, are not there. So I'll I'll go A with him honestly. Okay. And then what we got for Gap? Ooh, Gap is so incredibly strong right <laughs> yes, now. Yes, let's his, go. His his passive man <laughs> is insane against. The crit meta. Yeah. Even assassins build crit, right? Like you have Nasha, so cat players are starting to build crit. Um if you get spectral armor, crits basically do the same damage as a basic attack. You yep. still gain the effects of not, crits. not just basically, they actually do. Literally the same. Yeah, they actually do. <laughs> it's it's not minus twenty-five, because that's not how it works. It gets capped out at zero. Uh they still like apply crit effects and whatever, but he's really strong because of that. The shield is going to be better now because there's going to be a lot more burst and like less CC you have to 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 uh, use the shield on, so you can actually like 
put some good points into it, maybe even early on to avoid burst, where before you might have had to use it on a cap break and one in the jungle or a mere freeze in the jungle. So I think he's super, super strong. Yeah, I, de I definitely I, agree because he's like, he's the, the only guardian right now who has got like all the counters in his kit that you need, right? He's got the, the exactly. crit counter, but he's got uh, like anything uh, health related, he can also counter with the shield. So he's his one as well, good. right? Like flying around is a lot more. A lot, a lot better now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would, I would, I would just go insane and just say yes. I think he's on level without yeah. you a bit worse than Faf. I think he, if you, if you just look at the guardians in S, like he does pretty well into MC, kind of counters Athena. But that is a bit rough. But like, mm. could pretty much counters uh, Discordia as well. So yeah, yeah. I, I see him being a decent. I, I can guy. definitely see him as. I would not even like if anyone said he was competition to Fafnir directly. I wouldn't even doubt that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that. I might be overvaluing Fafnir a bit. We'll see. We'll see. I think that's definitely with, with Artemis and Fafnir. I think those are the two calls. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that might be a bit off. We'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll find we'll out. See. Yeah. Guan Yu is definitely in a better spot because he finally gets some mana back <laughs> mm -hmm. with uh, with Mage's Blessing, uh, if you want that. So that's very nice for him. But um, I don't know. I don't even know if he's more of a support or more of a solo at this point because I, you know. I think he's more of a support now. I, uh, but I don't value him that high. Mm hmm. I would maybe he has a return to the infamous, uh, infamous, infamous uh, DJ Pern uh, jungle Guan Yu. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love I it, would, but <laughs> I can see why people are so hyped and think he has a lot of potential right now. And I think he is a pretty decent guard. Uh, I'm, I'm just having a hard time because like I don't want to put him in a minus but I kind of mm. feel like that's where he belongs I mean I can actually I can actually see jungle Guan having more more of a logical reason now mm -hmm. than ever because you can really clear fast with that three and yeah. run around with Tolaria and yeah you just off to the next camp uh you could could predict A as well. I wouldn't let's be just, let's just throw him an A and see what happens. Uh -huh. I think he's one of those yeah. gods where I wouldn't say he's he is necessarily A right now, but he has more potential than before that could be invested somewhere and we'll see if it works out. Mm -hmm. Hachiman is probably higher than that. <laughs> he is. He's good, right? Because like yeah. his passive, his mana as well, you never needed mana on Hachiman before. And mm. where other ADCs struggle with mana now, like Hachi doesn't have that. I think that's not even the, the, the most ridiculous part. The most ridiculous part is not even the two steroid. It's the fact uh -huh. that he has got this one extended range and yeah, crit crits. chance is so <laughs> high now. Uh -huh. Like these long range crits are just absolutely insane when you can proc them so often now. You can literally stand in the back of a team fight and just like kind of like spray and pray and it, it's going to work mm -hmm. out eventually. You're going to crit someone for what? 600 yeah. plus. <laughs> exactly. And from a, from a support perspective as well, I think... Hachiman, I want Hachiman if I want to play aggressive. He's like pretty good. As soon as he hits level three, he just yeah. places his two and dashes in and just max people. So I, I don't know. I'm tempted to say S. Yeah, I, yeah, don't I know can, I can see that. I, I would say he's like above AMC by a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say S. He's very safe as well, right? Like, how are you gonna gang a Hachi man? Yeah. Are you gonna? I guess the way to do it is like play Honbats or Susano and put your free on him. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and hope that it works out that he, he still teleport after he runs away on his horse <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically just hope he cancels it early tries to like turn around <laughs> um hades now hades has got you know some things that work in his favor here i think i think uh, uh warlock sash is one of those things mm -hmm. and uh some lifesteal changes can always kind of maybe be good on him as well yeah. possibly um, mm -hmm. I don't think he's got anything for him that's like crazy better than before, but I think it puts him in a better spot than before. Yep. I think so as well. I think you can like kind of see the return of uh, Mogo, or Mogo or Hades, <laughs> right? Where what he do you just mean completely... return was never gone? Wait, wait. <laughs> that's true. Where he just completely dominates solo and doesn't really get punished because the jungler is just way too busy ping-ponging between the two back camps that mm -hmm. are like on a one minute respawn timer right now so i don't want to place him in a mm -hmm. but i don't want to place him in b i think a minus is the way to go right i think he has potential for a yeah. 
Um, I want to. I want to prove first, but yeah. I don't think he's B anymore. No, I think he's no. actually like he's definitely better than Ampush and Arachne and Cupid. Yeah, and I think he's kind of like uh, I think A minus is very good wavelength there, uh, along with Anubis kind of where you have to see mm -hmm. how well things turn out for him. Yeah, absolutely. Habwa Habwa got a. Uh, a, a, he is not. He, he didn't get a buff, but he is one of the gods that benefits uh, the most outside of stand swappers from from Mage's blessing, which I think is very interesting because he can spam that one and proc that so often, and it's a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's awesome. the biggest change for him, <laughs> and Warlocks maybe. I guess a, a book of that honestly as well, right? Go like book of top, book of death, get a lot of mana, get a lot of damage on him. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to do that, uh, that build combo, sure, absolutely. <laughs> but I think uh, from like. What I've experienced so far, as as nice as that is in theory, it also takes a while to get there. <laughs> yeah. One thing about this whole meta with us kind of predicting assassins are going to be a bigger thing now as well. It kind of hurts Hebo. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine like a Vestet or a Susano or something just jumping at you and you just yeah. kind of stand there like, yeah, oh, well, I, I guess I have to ult, ult him and try and kill him. And even if I get the kill, I'm probably going to die to anyone else. The, the, the question at the end of the day is that, especially towards more like with mid, mid game very, very short, and then you get into those late game builds, um, mm -hmm. are they still going to jump him? Because if he times it right, then he kills them right when that's they jump true. him. You know? yeah. So that's very interesting. I think it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a god that can definitely, it's a god that can have some level of development this season, depending on uh -huh. uh, how people actually like how pe how strong people feel he actually is in the end yeah um, I'm, I'm not sure where to place this i honestly think give it a give it a give it a go I've, i would once again be somewhere around a minus a kind of yeah I, I, don't I don't think he's b at all um uh -huh. he's not a plus for sure uh, uh i i would be fine with placing him in A because he mm -hmm. might have more merit to his jungle yeah. role now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the thing looking looking at some of the other guards in A, I think A is, is very yeah. justified with jungle. I think, yeah, I think he's this really good guard that just doesn't fit in any of the roles, right? Yeah. You don't have a role where you can safely get yeah. to that crazy late game Hebo. And, and jungle could definitely work for him. It's, it's, it's clear speed is definitely there and his rotation speed is also there. Uh, the problem for him at it, that point is the mana because uh, Bambas really doesn't give you that much mana back <laughs> compared mm -hmm. to other items. And uh, also that a lot of the strong mage items right now are stacking items, which you can't really build that well in the jungle. Yep. But we'll see. The next one is definitely yours. Hello. Ooh. I actually got a new emote. It's really nice. It looked, like, it looked like you in the start. I was like, oh, this looks too much like Nuke Slot. You have to remake this. It re I'm going to send it over to you after you can see it. Right. Uh, anyway, Hell, I think Hell benefited so much of these changes. She's going to be super strong. Hell also got like an increase in base MS, which is super strong for her mm -hmm. as well. Uh, she got magical protection. Finally, she's going to be even more tanky now. Hell is a support, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be valuing Hell way over any other people. But I think Hell is S. And I think Hell is S because she can build really tanky. Mm -hmm. uh, and she, she kind of like Mage's Blessing really helps her get into the early game. Um, mm -hmm. You can do this build where you go Ward Chalice and Mana Chalice, you'll, which kind of makes up for not having... The early uh, mana regen from the old watchers. Mm -hmm. uh, the the movement speed boosts Talarius uh, travelers now. Yep. Um, Twenty five percent movement speed on hell. That's absolutely it's insane. insane. She's just, I mean, it's she's insane. Anyone around. runs double insane on hell. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because hell's biggest weakness is can you catch her and lock her down? She will die. But if she's just speeding around with a movement speed a buff, like uh, uh, like the actual buff she got, and 25% movement speed and her heal, she's zooming at 555 right now, which is very, very fast for a immobile mage healer. Yeah. She hurts as well, man. I, I My build right now on hill is... Um, this is a late game build. Obviously, you're going to go like early game items and then sell boots or whatever, but I go Relic Decker. I have a Phoebes as well. I'm trying to like include Phoebes so I have more freedom in my build. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lotus, Genji's, Pyfax, and Rod of Asclepius. So you're going to have a lot of auras. You're going to have a lot of like cooldown. You have your Lotus Crown. You also do a lot of damage and you're just still still zooming with 20% movement speed. And I think she's absolutely insane. If you can get past like level 10 or whatever and you're even with hell, mm -hmm. she's really good. And she's not even bad pressure in lane. Like she hurts. 
Yeah, yeah. She's scary. I I would have probably put it into S minus, but as this is a deal is with you, we'll, we'll put it into S. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll take it. Obviously, I know why he wants to come back. Oh wow! <laughs> but in my opinion, hell is here, and I 100% understand if he goes in S minus in in any other like people's of. Uh, a person's opinion this, 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 as a people like who are they anyways <laughs> yeah come on man <laughs> all right the next one is uh herc, herc. herc. Uh, that's interesting i actually haven't really thought much about herc and what he will do now or how he will do it <laughs> i mean mage's blessing i guess and then yeah you yeah, seal up a lot? blessing man just go full attack speed build. <laughs> I could please see, don't like, please don't do that somebody's gonna see, like, try that now donk, donk. Uh, Punk duck, sorry. Uh, just do that and just run down people. <laughs> He'll do a, a new I'm back video. Uh, I don't know. I think Herg again, he's just a warrior for me. That's yeah. always going to be there. Always yeah. going to do his job. He's on the lines with Bellona. He can hold his lane. He can do his job. He's scary. He's not scary. He's in between. He's average. Yeah. That's just my take cool. on it. All right. Ho Yi, I would say, is a bit above average. He's got that nice yeah. passive going for him now, you know? Mm -hmm. that's uh definitely a benefit being like a bit not not that critty <laughs> mm -hmm. and and you you'd think that ho is worse now because the lane's a lot wider but the thing is as you mentioned earlier there's so many walls in the jungle yeah. that you have such an easy time getting triple bounces and the map is more um like squared now whereas before it was like a lot of weird circles and triangles shapes Mm -hmm. It's a lot more square now, so it's easier to kind of predict where it's going to go when you yep. just kind of have to wing it. Yep. I think he's A+. plus. I'll yep. put him like slightly uh, below MC and Freya, but still above the likes of like Anne, and Kern, etc. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next one, Hunbats. Hunbats benefits from a crit meta because uh -huh. he has that extra one quit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the thing is that theoretically, Melis is better on Hun Bats on paper because more damage, blah, blah, blah. But if you have his passive plus Deathbringer, you have such uh -huh. an insane crit chance so early. Uh, not even that expensive, 2,800 gold. And, you know, even if you don't crit, it's still a lot of power. And that helps him for sure. Even if anything mm -hmm. else doesn't really... I don't, I, I don't think like, like his clear is pretty good, yeah. Um, I don't think the meta overall insanely favors him. Uh, but I think that, that Deathbringer change alone does so much for him. Mm -hmm. I think this is a statement, again, uh, not about his tier, but I think Honbats is one of the best lane game, late game guards in the game. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely insane. His struggle is the path to it. Yeah. And I think he'll have an easier time to overcome that. I yeah. would go A plus mm -hmm. with him because I just think he's a bit above like Dashi, definitely above Baka, but he's not like on the likes of best that right now, I mm -hmm. think. Um, so I think A plus is like really where he fits. Yeah. He's like he's always gonna do a bit better than an A jungler in pretty much every team comp, and that's like one of Hanbat's uh, big like yays as well that he just kind of fits into anything. All right. Another thing that I'd, I'd like to note about Hanbat, uh, which I think is very interesting, uh, is that he like the the, the while uh, usually Melis should be better. He has the combo of building uh, Hydra's Lament plus Deathbringer, oh, yeah. which will like double amplify Ooh. the damage. <laughs> and uh, also, previously you you couldn't just build that because you at some point you need pen for your abilities and stuff like that. But now you have that in your in your jungle item in the Assassin's mm -hmm. Blessing, so you can literally yeah. go Assassin's Blessing, Power Boots, Hydra's Deathbringer if you Death want to. Bringer. Yeah, and oh, that man, is you... that is painful. And at that point, you don't even that when you get that, you don't have to get all the way to late game to do things. You know, you uh, have you don't have the cooldown reduction yet that you want, but it's pretty good. <laughs> he's gonna be so scared level twelve, just blink free and crit for like one k. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I'm playing Hebo mid and it just dies. Kind of um, Isis, I think, is one of those gods who also benefits. Uh, mm -hmm. from the fact that Warlocks is better because Isis is one of these gods that like when she gets focused she's dead because she doesn't really have the escape tools but she's not a bad god and she can easily build mid pressure uh, and I think Warlocks is exactly what, what, what you could use there unless you're against a, a lane where you want to build super high pressure early on anyways mm -hmm. I think a general misconception of Isis is Isis dies to assassins 
Isis dies to guardians that can like lock her in like a break in or whatever. Isis actually does pretty well into assassins with all yeah. the CC, the slow immune she has. She's going to be favored in this meta as well because she's pressure. She can like out clear the first mid wave, maybe even go for the enemy red buff. Mm -hmm. He does well in the 1v1. Uh, she's like, I think she's better let off alone. Uh, definitely favored in that. So yeah. I think she's, she's A plus as well in yeah. my book. Like yeah. she's a bit below the score there. Not quite a level, but I think she has potential. She kind of fits in. Yeah. Izanami. Izanami. Uh, oh God. How does, how does her basic attack work with Hunter's Blessing right now? It's only on the first hit now or yeah. something? It's only on the first one, which, okay. which sucks. But <laughs> I think it's okay that's that way. I think it's okay because we <laughs> tried it when it wasn't that way in PTS, and I can tell you we were proxying waves all the time because she <laughs> free shot the wave at level one pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it was not fun. No, <laughs> I think again I would. I'm just gonna throw that. I would, I would go A plus with the tsunami. Mm -hmm. She might not be that late game hunter like Artemis. She still has very good steroid, a good yeah. old. Yeah. Her escape is kind of lackluster because she can predict it. Mm -hmm. But what she does so well is get, gaining that early pressure. And if that means that you can get uh, a more late game oriented guardian like Fafnir, or even back as a Ganesha into the game, mm -hmm. I think that has a lot of merit to it because she's going to clear the wave uh, very fast. And, and she might also see the few buffs off, off that. And I, that just makes her A plus yep. to me. She yep. might even be as minus if people figure out like, uh, I, I'd, I'm going to leave it at A plus looking at some of the guts. I, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll go A, a plus as well. I think, I think one of the big oh. benefits, uh, again, is she's one of the guards with a strong attack speed steroid. And if you go mm -hmm. into a crit meta with low attack speed overall, oh, yeah. that's super strong too. Yeah, she's good. She's a good critter. Janus. Janus gets a big benefit from the uh, new layout of the jungle because there's a lot more walls, so you can just pull right through. On the other mm -hmm. hand, uh, Janus has, uh, like, the way that when, when Janus gets ganked, what he usually wants to do in most situations is uh, get to a wall and get out of there. And the lanes are wider, so mm -hmm. getting out of there is not necessarily as easy anymore. And I think that makes him quite vulnerable early on. That's what I've I've like seen so far, but I don't know where uh -huh. that puts him. Um, I think Janus is a bit better now because split push is more of a thing. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's gonna run around and be a bit more easy to kill, a bit more squishy, with, which might play against him as well because he kind of gets bursted a bit easier. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's that big of a of a dis of a difference on Janus at least from a Capricorn jumping on you, being a hybrid, or like a Bastet jumping on you. Obviously, yeah. Capricorn would blink. He split pushes very well as well. He's a very safe split pusher. Split pusher has a lot, I like guess, a lot better right now. Um, I would go S minus. I okay. Think he, oh, that's that's that, high. That's that's high. <laughs> but he, with the correct team play and like especially in ranked and stuff, he's just absolutely this insane carry. If it's a good player playing him, right. and I, 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 I think. Everyone tempts to overrate Janus. I don't think he's S or S plus, which he's like in some. Everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Janus the best guy in the game." Why mm. didn't you pick him? And like, but I think this map favors him a bit more because mm -hmm. you can also just build warlocks on him now. Cronus Pendant is a really good item now as well, just for power. Yeah, that's um, true. That's true. That's definitely. It. I'm 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 highballing it S minus. I know you probably okay. liked A plus. I, know I would have been like more. A plus, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I can I can agree with S minus. I didn't really think of the Cronus Pendant change because that's yeah now actually, actually a relevant item for <laughs> it's very good item. for him yeah. like it's so much cooldown reduction if you think about it getting yeah. a tick on a low cooldown ability and now we're coming to the hunter that where that mm. kind of made me think maybe we shouldn't put izanami in in s minus yeah. because uh -huh. i think jing wei is actually insane right now uh-huh i think that it's not only uh, a you have still have a very quick way back to lane and uh mm -hmm. That's something that, if, not, not only to your own lane, but anywhere, really. And that's something that's going to be very beneficial. B, once again, like Artemis, she can go into very early crit, and it can be very strong on her uh, in, in combination with her steroid. Um, and uh, C, she's still a pretty safe guard at the same time. Uh -huh. So even like a, a 2v1, uh, a 2v2 matchup won't change too much for her, especially when, you know, most of the CC that, or like not most, a lot of the CC that comes out of Guardian are, are knockups. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I understand. I think the only like weakness Guardian, uh, sorry, Jingwei has right now 
not Scotty yet. That's a, lo a long time to <laughs> Scotty. Uh, is that she's not the best pressure. You mm -hmm. can build her in a way so she becomes good pressure. But at the same time, she has that kind of, oh, well, you poked me. I'm just going to fly back to base. And that, yeah. that passive really still gets her a significant distance, right? Because it's only, uh, uh, is it vertical change, I guess, rather than a horizontal change? Yeah, um, I mean, it still means that the path should be a little bit wider towards, the, a little bit further towards the lane because it's further to the right or left as well, right? But not drastically, so, if even. No, it, it should mm -hmm. be, it should be like a little bit further, but. Yep. But I think, uh, I, I would say as minus. Yeah. And then we have. I agree with you. Kali. <laughs> I don't know about Kali. Like, uh, I don't know about Kali. She, she just, she's just gonna die to crit Hondas, right? That's yeah. How I look at it. I mean, sure, like not even only that. Like even God's like, you get and her impaled, you get Hoji stunned, and you just, you know, done for as long as they have any sort of crit. And there's, and then the other assassins are more like, you know, like you said, there's more assassins in the jungle in general. It's more bursty. Uh, doesn't help when you die before your ult goes off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. I mean, at the same time, gold and XP are easier to come by overall. Um, which, and like jungle farm is very easy to come by, which helps her like getting to where she wants to get. So that's maybe a counter argument here. But mm -hmm. I don't know how much that does for her. Yeah. I don't think she's quite a Ragnar level. I would think she's like A minus. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. A minus fits right. pretty well. Like people can make it work. Right. Nice. Next one is Capri. Tell us about mm -hmm. Capri. Capri is this very fat buck. We actually found out today that they use him to like measure <laughs> the map. <laughs> to that measure was the really distance. funny. This, he's just so this fat. gap is two Capris wide. <laughs> uh -huh, exactly. And that's actually the measurement they use, which is pretty fun. <laughs> um, Capri was this really strong early game guardian that applied a lot of pressure and still really did his job very well late game um, with his ult and just setting up great CC. They really nerfed his two now, so his two is a lot worse. Um, he's still good early pressure. I think he's going to be seen a bit more, especially with these more, uh, this, this more of a bursting meta, I guess mm -hmm. we're going to see. Um, so I would go, I would honestly go for a bit of a risky one and go A+, plus because yep. I think he does well with pressure. I think he, he has very good CC, his ult is always going to be relevant, Capri fits into most compositions, he's one of those very flexible guards. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, at the end of the day, the question is if you can actually get the ult off before somebody's going to be crit to pieces at this point. But, exactly. But if, if you can, then definitely there's a lot of value in that. Um, mm -hmm. I think A plus. Kep Kepri does well with ors as well, right? Like yeah. you sit in the back line, yeah. feeps, hard ward, so I mean, you chill. He, he wants he was like he was the god for ors, and that I think was part of mm -hmm. what made him so dominant. That his kit in itself isn't something crazy late game outside of the ultimate, but mm -hmm. uh, the ors kind of make up for it, right? And yeah. the less ors there are that are like frequently built on supports, the worse for Capri, basically. Yep. Then we have Kukul Khan. Uh, Kukul Khan is the king of, of double stacking. And I would say now for the first time, that's actually a viable strategy for more than yep. just Kukul Khan. So that mm -hmm. helps him for sure. Yeah. Book of the uh, day. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Um, Kukul Khan is very, he's very rough. It's like, it feels like he should be, be this very decent guard. Like he has a very good escape, in my opinion. Very underrated. Slither is actually a really good ability. The problem with Slither is once it's on cooldown, that's his too. It's just like really meh for you. What are mm -hmm. you gonna do? You're just a fat noodle. Um, I I don't know where to place him honestly because I I truly think he has more potential than people like give him and I think mm -hmm. he's gonna fare better and just like I'm gonna farm as much as I can I'm gonna clear the mid wave and go and farm something he's also mana hungry though which hurts him so mm. I'm not sure where I'd put him right now I would just say A and and see where uh -huh. it goes yeah so. I like A I think he's gonna be like definitely more merit than Anubis yeah and um, Hades Afro yeah yeah, yeah. Kumbakana yeah. tell us about Kumbakana as support <laughs> okay so Everyone's like, why isn't Kumbakana like this super strong guardian? 
Kumbakana is probably the most predictable guard in the game, in my opinion. Um, sure, you can blink old someone and that's not predictable, but all of his abilities are very channeled. It's very telegraphed what a Kumba is going to play. His main form of like consistency is his two, which takes so long to channel, and you can just kind of interrupt it. Like just look at all our top tiers right now. You have like Fafnir can stun it, Arjo can stun it, Hill can cleanse it, and like Athena can taunt it or whatever. Like there's so many ways to interrupt a uh, Kumba. His free feels very dull because it sure you can get messed for three seconds, but in most scenarios, it like it only really helps him when he's running away like peeling someone um his one feels really bad i would i would honestly say that kumbakana is our first c guard i, I he oh, doesn't wow. he doesn't even have he doesn't even have good pressure i i, I just really dislike kumba i don't <laughs> see him working any other place than in support role and i don't see why you'd ever pick a kumba over a bacchus or an Aries or a ganesha just to take some of the guards like Gorn as well all right uh, i'll take I, it I would have thought that, B, but I, I can see the C now mm, that... I, I think the C is just because, uh, whereas, like, sure, you might have one really good approach player, you might have one really good Arachne or Cupid player, and those guards might be very good in specific combo, uh, team comps. I don't see Kumba filling that role. Mm -hmm. If you want the mess, you're just going to go for Ganesha. If you want, like, the instant old surprise, you're going to go, like, Savannah or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kuzumbo. Ooh, I think I think Kuzumbo is still underrated. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Kuzumbo is good. I hate him. I I don't <laughs> like him as a support. I hate playing him. But like, look at what Twig did. Mm -hmm. He played he played Kuzumbo, and we had Kuzumbo prepared for Worlds as well. Yeah. But we just never got that far to pull it out. Uh. Um, crit meta. That favors him as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's pre-mitigation as well, right? Yeah, so and he's like, he, like with, <laughs> with Shell being nerfed, right? Everyone has to be like concerned with that part. Or at some point the Shell is burned, but not Kuzumbo. He gets his reflect anyways. Yep, exactly. That's pretty good. I would go A for now, mm -hmm. but I would not be surprised if we see him raised like A+. Plus. I think someone like Captain Twig in particular could do very well on him in the mm -hmm. jungle role. He might not even be that bad of a guardian now, because the Nene is kind of like a good ability, a little oh one. God, it's, it's becoming really obnoxious these days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> ah, <lucky>. uh, <laughs> no one likes this guard. Come on, man. Everyone just hates him. I think Loki, for the first time in a long time, is in a better spot, though. Yep. I think the trans buff help, helps him. The, the fact that you can kind of split push the map more helps him. Uh, Proxy is, is pretty nasty with Loki anyway, so mm -hmm. um, he can just get... And, and the uh, what was pointed out as well is the, the whole minion aggro thing with the towers is really good for yep. Loki because yep. you proxy one wave and then the next wave kind of collapses with the other one in the tower, but the minions will still go for the tower and by that time Loki's already in mid lane proxying the next wave kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So as much as I don't think he's like a competitive go-to god, I think he's got more going from than since ever basically he does a lot of damage now and as you said like he has an easier time farming up now i think that's yeah. like his big struggle but how do i get to that really annoying point um i don't know i'm like tempted to put him in a but at the same time i'm not sure i think we'll see the, the, the thing is like now you have to like look between competitive and like ranked yeah. again uh, like casual uh, player base in competitive is he a no he's not but if you combine all the three, like casual, competitive, and ranked, I think he's A. Yeah. It's just how I would go. I mean, with, like... to be fair, he's, he's always been that in that regard. As long as you don't look yeah, at non competitive yeah. modes, those low key mains, as, as much as they're hated, they, they just stomp, you know, until a certain yeah, do. level of play they do. And, uh -huh. uh, and I think I've, I've... I, 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 would, I, I, will, I will throw this out there right now. Assuming that we're going to keep playing on the client that we have at the moment. Uh -huh. I would not be 100% surprised if we see a Loki in competitive yeah. for the first time. Like I feel I feel a lot better putting Loki in A yeah. after these two now as well. Like especially in you know like that was always the point with Bastet like you know or she just she just bursts someone and 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 split pushes that's what she does. But it kind of works right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really does. Medusa. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. I wish Medu I feel I would feel better about Medusa right now, but I mean the trans buff is nice for her. I think that's what she's got going for her. But mm -hmm. uh, and if Deathbringer gets nerfed, Medusa suddenly becomes a lot better. But in a crit meta, she's just not the god you want to pick. Mm -hmm. I think Medusa theoretically should be this really great god that has a very good dash uh, used offensively, good clear, very strong old. And her one into like the dash should be really insane. She just feels like again a bit clunky. You can juke around a lot, sure, but mm -hmm. ah, I don't know. I think she's a. I wouldn't put her on a polo level. I still think you can pick her and mm -hmm. do well with her, like you can with Anne her, like you can with Kern. Mm -hmm. But I don't think she's above those cards either. I would, I would probably honestly see her at the moment again more as a similar to Chiron, more as a mid laner than yeah. a, a mm -hmm. uh, ADC actually. Um, I feel that after nerfs she got a long, uh, got a long, long time ago, her two is still a bit too weak for like yeah. that pressure that she used to have. Like she, she does not have the range and not the pressure that she once had, and gets outcleared by quite a few ADCs actually. Uh, but she's not trash, so yeah, I can I can go with A. Mm -hmm. Oh god, the next one is disgusting. Yeah, as Mercury with Deathbringer. Really scary. Uh, and boots and it's Solaria, like, yes. Like, like uh, Mercury got all the buffs. It's he's, absolutely gross. I'm actually upset that he didn't get any nerfs for all the buffs he got. <laughs> he's really strong at like yeah. just farming as well. Uh, honestly, I would minimum put him on the same level as Pastet right now. Yeah. Minimum, if not I S. Uh huh. I I think S might be a bit over the top. I think Merc has this history of kind of choking mm -hmm. in competitive play. I think the only one that really pulled it out to perfection was Mast uh, during those games against NG. Adapting used to as well, but way back in the yeah, day. Yeah, sure. Way back in the day, like season two adapting, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, very, very strong guard. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him in S, but right now it would go S minus. Yep, I'm done with that. I'd, uh, it's one of those guards, right, where like, Sure, Fafnir is probably too high with S plus, and I'm actually considering moving him down again, but that's because he has a history of being very good, whereas Merc is kind of like, doesn't have a history, in my opinion, yeah. at least as being S minus, more like an should, A guard. Should we, should we move Fafnir down? Should we move him to S? I, okay, I, I'm going to go with moving Fafnir to S. I think okay. it makes a sense now. I'm yeah. kind of, came, came, fell, fell down a bit, you know? He's yeah. not the best in lane, so I think that actually takes away from him. All right. Um... And we got another crit assassin. That Ooh. one I don't think does quite as well as Merc. And nah, that's absolutely Naja. Not. <laughs> but I still think it's a very good buff for her, especially because she can for her. Like, yeah, she can keep up her <laughs> passive for her. You know what? I always call uh, um, Nasha a girl, and she she's she's my grill man. All I'll right. just tell All you right. that. <laughs> uh, I've I've, I've only been playing the the boy Naja skin so. <laughs> I'm, used to, I'm not Jean, no. <laughs> uh huh. I, like um, it. I think Much so. The, th the thing with Naja is it's still an all in guard. Yes, the, the crit change is kind of good, but he's also not the one that benefits from it the most because uh, for him, old Deathbringer was actually super good because he had guaranteed crits on his ultimate, and every guaranteed crit would have more damage. Now, the old will do less damage. You have more crits outside of that, and your, your three will do more damage, but the old kind of falls off a little bit. Um, if you were death building Deathbringer to begin with, which was not necessarily mm -hmm. core. Uh, and I think the jungle clear is uh, is great for him. I think one of the awkward things about Naja actually is uh, he could be so good at rotating between the camps and that could be a significant benefit for him uh, over others that have like leaps yep. to leap onto camps, which you know mm -hmm. increase the speed as well, is that his ring toss is something you want to use as early as possible on a camp to get the protection shred yeah. uh, and to get all the bounces off. But at the same mm -hmm. time, the ring toss is what gives you the movement speed buff. Yeah. So you kind of want to use it at the end as well, but you can't do mm -hmm. both. And mm -hmm. and if that was changed somehow, that it's like after the target is killed, you get the movement speed in, t in, in case of a uh, buff camp, then I think he would be uh, all of a sudden a lot better. But before that's the case, she's just all right. Yeah. I'd say I would A. go A. Yeah. Yeah, might have potential for A+, plus, but mm -hmm. I think A is a good place for now. Yeah. Neath. Mm. I think... Theoretically, she should be better, right? Yeah, with the global ult, right? Ult, and you yeah. can build trans, go for some kind of pen build. You mm. can even throw some crit in there. Like, Neath does hit very hard if yeah. she gets, like, one or two hits off. Yeah. 
I mean, Neve maybe, uh, again, more as an ability-based mid-hunter. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, trends. And you could literally, you could go for like a full like trends pen build and then just put Deathbringer yeah. in last item now. Yeah. Because it's, exactly. it's literally viable and it, it yeah. would hit so hard if you get it's that one. Crew. Mm -hmm. It's a gamble, but you know, if it pays off, why I not? think I agree. She's definitely going to be a better mid laner. And but what my, my one worry with Neve is once you use the backflip, she's so easy to kill if yeah. even a behind. And if you look at all tier lists right now, the assassin, she has his best death, it's Merc. It's even like Hunbats, they just kind of kill. Yeah. Neath, right. And I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, their abilities will act, like because Neath backflip is so telegraphed and so slow, they would actually like catch mm -hmm. her still while she does that, which is a big problem no, too. No. Here's my thought about Neath though. I think she she has been slightly underrated, and I think she's going to be a better mid mage than Chiron, probably Medusa as yeah. well. So I would still place her in A. Yeah. But yeah. that would be more for like the mid role where if she went ADC, it would probably be A minus. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna give her an A. Her, yeah. her an A. Because the flex potential is there as well. Okay. Right. Nemesis. 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 <laughs> Interesting because. Oh, one uh, one question, Duke. Yeah. How comes Nemesis gets stunned by Medusa old when Nemesis is blind? <laughs> because Nox That's does based... too. Because Nox does too. That's the oh, reason. Oh, right? oh okay. okay gotcha. <laughs> how how come you get even stunned by by a Medusa old when you're Shibal ulted? It, it shouldn't even work. You're blind. Ooh. Think Ooh. about that one. That would be cool. <laughs> um, so the thing with Nemesis is what I find interesting is there used to be a build, uh, I think Adapting was the first one we brought into competitive a while ago, which was basically attack cancel Nemesis, which was um, yeah. uh, Hydra's Lament uh, and then just double crit. And that mm -hmm. build should actually be pretty viable again now that you have like pen yeah. in your jungler item and you have Hydra's being pretty good still and you have Deathbringer being really good. So mm -hmm. that build, I think, is going to be really interesting. Outside of that, Kin's kind of got this buff nerf thing, which is more a nerf for the most part. It's definitely rough for her. Um, I think overall she's just average right now. Yeah, I think I would go A+, plus, honestly, because yeah. I think what she has going for her as well is that she just kind of runs people down. Mm -hmm. She has a generally, she has a pretty good matchup into uh, other assassins. Yeah. Merc Absolutely. would outbox anyone, but Nim could honestly outbox Merc with the correct yeah, build yeah, with yeah. her free up, right? And, and also, that's, that's we still have to keep in mind that carry. not only Merc, but she can she can counter any hunter with a shield. Yeah. And that reflect exactly. is is nasty. <laughs> yeah. And if you get that through, that like, you can effectively you can take out the enemy hunter without potentially without using your ultimate, uh, just by like poking them back with the shield so low that they have to back out of the fight. And I think that's mm -hmm. that's valuable. Nike, I think, is also pretty valuable this season. I think yeah, Nike's I think so. passive, especially, you know, yep. more movement speed on a bigger map. Well, duh, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it kind of does things. And I think the buff for uh, her one, uh, not being interrupted by, by knock up, by knock back, is crucial for her solo performance, not in every matchup, but in many. Yeah, I think everyone's like, oh, Nike got nerfed. She got buffed. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. <laughs> she, got, she got buffed. Nike's one hurt. And it's still going to clear waves. Yeah. Don't you worry. Like realistically, yeah. the only ones the only place when Nike got nerfed is when you're like with no offense to, to anyone if you're playing like in Bronx. Because that's yeah. where no one will ever try to interrupt your clear. Exactly. But even in silver, people know, you know, we can try to do a stun, yeah. knock up, knock back, silence, whatever, on her one. So yeah, I, I think uh I think she's definitely in a pretty good spot i would actually I would, go as far as a plus yeah that's exactly what i was thinking again we i think we're gonna see a lot more laning with like get the guardian and the the assassin is kind of gonna rotate in the jungle all the time mm -hmm. but it, you won't see those crazy soul lane rotations to like the do lane at 10 minutes anymore yeah i like the gold fights and that just makes her better because she's always going to do something for her team um and she has cleave attacks as well right her, her jungle yeah, yeah, yeah. is not bad Definitely. at all I think she another, another interesting jungle. thing uh, for, for Nike specifically is uh, she also has pretty nice lane sustain through her too. And mm -hmm. uh, additionally, she's one of those guards that uh, when she can be in the right place at the right time, she could have a massive impact. And mm -hmm. with how the meta is unfolding, I would not be entirely surprised once it's not glitched anymore, which is an important point for it, uh, if we see teleport coming back a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. teleport is great for Nike. Mm -hmm. Definitely agreed. And then we have... Nox. 
I don't know about Nox. <laughs> no, Nox is hard, right? Because she's a flex. She's a support. Yeah. We've seen it. We've gotten it proven. Like the only thing that beat the unbeatable away in the false pit was Nox support. Yeah. Like it's just that good. It's beaten a lot of like Dallas has been a monster on it. And then when I think Nox, I also think of like pretty prime, mm. uh, at least for me in like the spring split, getting like this huge, uh, dash in and just killing four people, uh, on, on the land against Dignitas and kind of saving the final for, for us. I, I think Nox has so much potential. Oh, but this is actually time, an, also, an interesting so thought, by the way. Sorry, I just, just to interrupt you there. Yeah. Um, how does Nox 3 work with Major's Blessing? Can she double proc it or does it count as it, one ability? It, it does double proc. That could um, be yeah, pretty I'm good. Yeah, I'm it. <laughs> that has been a strat before that someone blinks behind the enemy mid lane and you just bam, bam, dash in, you know? And yeah, I know, I know. Like I, I, I know it used damage. to be the strat with like, with like older items like uh, Soulstone, but I didn't know if it works with uh, the new Major's Blessing too, as, as two instances. I'm fairly certain it does because I've played it and mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of damage. So I'm. <laughs> that that I think is something that's very interesting for like early ganks with a jungler and then just dash uh -huh. through, pop them. Yeah. I think uh, I, I like Nox has lockdown right on mm -hmm. like assassins. She has damage mitigations for the hunter. She ha she can like even which might be like even better now. She can just kind of dash into global ults if that becomes a thing. Yeah. Um, if those guards become small played, mm -hmm. I would go as far as say A+. Plus. I think she's going to be slightly better than the likes of Acne, the likes of Kronos, the likes mm -hmm. of Kukul, but she's not quite going to be this Cordia Genus level. I think yeah. she's fine with this. Uh, like, I think the flex does a lot for her that you can never know if it's Nox support or Nox mid actually matters so much, mm -hmm. at least in competitive. Yeah, A+. Plus. No. Well. Oof. Oof. Uh, I don't know, man. She... Mm. She's she's good in the right hands, but she mm. also just dies. I, it's, I think the problem is like, I mean, what's nice, for example, uh, just into into the upcoming meta is that she has the minions, which can theoretically block a few crits for you if things mm -hmm. go right, which is very yeah. good when it happens. But it's like everything with Nuwa is such a huge if, like. Can she block? Can she get this the the the, the stun plus the three through the enemy off in the position she's in? Can she get close enough? Uh, can she make it to the point of the game where she's impactful without being bullied out and focused out? I don't know. I would actually. I think I would actually put her with a tear in my eye. I would put her in A minus. <laughs> I, I can feel you. I would just nothing to add. I think you came ac across it really well. All right, I minus. I I hope I hope she gets something at, at some point, or maybe she like works better than Warlocks than I'm expecting, or something like that. It would be cool to see Nuwa a bit more in the mid again. Um, <laughs> Odin. <laughs> uh, he's hard, man. Like, he's very good into certain comps. Mm. Uh, we know someone like Rival likes him a lot. I think he's super strong. I say he's just your average A warrior. Like, he can be played in jungle. He even has married to him in support now. You can probably play him in solo as well. Yeah, I think I think the interesting point is uh, how well is he going to do in a in a dual kill lane and how uh -huh. good is he going to be uh, in terms of jungling, clearing especially as well. Yeah. I mean, one of the big perks is he already used Telaria before most of the time, so nothing yeah. really changes there, and it's just better for him now. So I think he's got a few points going for him, but A is uh, where I'd put him. Like, yeah. In certain matchups, you know, against the hell, having an Odin oh. is very nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Osiris. Osiris, I am very certain, falls off compared to where he was before because he was that super bully with Death Toll and he still got the cleaves, he still got the, uh, the Hunter's Blessing potential with the AoE damage, but I think others are just more dominant in solo than he is now. Mm -hmm. I definitely think you're right. Uh, that like sure he was this lane bully, but I think the strongest point about Osiris was was and still is his late game. His eight, mm -hmm. his late game with with Fawns is absolutely nuts. He has very high scaling. His passive is insane. He has so much damage mitigation. You just kind of run people down. Mm -hmm. It's like why we, as an example, played in the jungles. We're like, okay, well, Osiris is just this insane character. We kind of want on our team. Yeah. Can he get? He'll definitely have a harder time getting to the late game now. 
Yeah. Which is why I'm, 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 I might have like said S plus before. I, I still want to go high. I still want to go S, which I know is probably like very high for you, but that's very high for me. Especially in when my eyes, that Osiris thorns, is which you mentioned is, is nerf too. Like, factoring that. I guess, in. yeah. I guess I can go S minus, but I definitely don't think I'll go like lower right. than that because he's this insane, like. I, I can see S minus, so but I would, I would not put him uh, above Kukulan at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think. That's okay. Right yeah, I, I, okay. I can, I can actually see that in this meta. So I, I like, yeah, and cool in, in this minds. We'll see. I still think Osiris is insane. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm on the Osiris jungle and everything trained still. So <laughs> I'm, I'm biased. That's just how it is. <laughs> we'll see. I, I personally wouldn't be surprised if he drops lower than that eventually, but we'll see where, where, how things go for him. Mm -hmm. The next one is interesting. Poseidon was like not really on most people's radar until Worlds, and then he suddenly got picked, and it was like, what's going on? Um, yeah. I think Hi. Poseidon is someone. <laughs> I just got a follow on Twitch. Thank you for the follow, Dion. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, I think Poseidon is someone that. Uh, he, he. I think he can benefit from the new meta. Um, especially the spear buff is something that's very nice for him. I think uh, something like Warlocks can, like if you're aiming for late game, can also be very good for him. Uh, even like a, a, if you want to, like a burst combo with Thoth, Book of the Dead would work for him, kind of. So I think he's got a lot of flex options, but at the same time, I don't think he's like insane in any regard. Yeah, I think he's just A, right? Yeah. So. Not much talk. And talking about A, I just think our next card is A as well. Yep. Like, I, I, not I, much to talk about, right? Pretty, yeah, pretty average. Very, very straightforward. Always gonna do his job, heal, bam. He's not gonna be played in other roles. He's a mid laner, he's solid. We all know Ra, he's been there for fucking ages. <laughs> Put him in, bam, A. The next one is not gonna be A. <laughs> oh man, like, I don't know. I was like, oh well, Regen might be a bit worse, which is nerf. And then I actually watched Tease today play Regen. <laughs> and I just saw her completely <laughs> demolish and one shot four people <laughs> with the drums without like any damage items. And I was just kind of sitting there, well, Ragin is this insane god, and what Ragin does so well. Oh, I keep in mind, keep in mind that was with the old uh, Rod of the Houthi. That it's not the new oh, one. Oh yeah, okay, okay. That's what that was with the old Rod, but it was still four damage items. <laughs> what Ragin does so well is that Ragin is is the only mage, in my opinion, in the game that is able to initiate a fight and not die. You yeah. can jump in, and you can ult, and people are gonna run away. They are not gonna try and kill you. They're gonna they're gonna run they don't want to get hit by that old because that old does like 700 damage in yeah. full build late game per per hit and i think that's such an insanely valuable thing to have um within a team is that your mage is actually able to jump in and just say okay let's go mm -hmm. he has very good clear very good 1v1 potential relatively safe guard as well low cooldowns once uh, you get like later into the game he does well with health like he does well with those kind of hybrid mages builds mm -hmm. i guess you can say mm -hmm. yeah i myself have been having a ton of fun playing him in support lately go like thieves gem of iso spear of magus <laughs> like um, that is disgusting I, sir <laughs> and, you, and it, it, it's insane like how much you actually do um, he he he's so strong i'm gonna go s plus i think he's the best guard in the game even though radio got nerfed yeah i can i can definitely see that I, I would say like either either S plus or S, but he's definitely yeah. still very far up there. I think even like even if you don't want to build him like in, in a like tankier style right now, even if you're gonna go like stupid full CDR with Chronos Pendant, you can do that. It's mm -hmm. it's possible. Yeah. And like so many yep. ways he will always be effective. Like I think Ragen is one of the few guards, as long as you have like any structure in your build, you can't even build him wrong. Because everything mm -hmm. kind of works. Yeah. You can go Gem of ISO, you can go Kronos, you can go just pure damage, stack it all up. It, it all works kind of. I think it's interesting. Yeah. And I think you will need nerfs. Yep. And Agreed. that brings us to Ram. Uh, I think we can make this short. I think Ram is good because uh, attack speed steroid. Uh, that kind of favors him. He's got the good, he's got good lane pressure. Uh, does also usually benefit like from ability damage for his ultimate and stuff. Won't have that now mm -hmm. if you go for crit. But overall, I think a very potent character. I would say it's somewhere around like A plus ish. I would go A plus. And I think one very important point I want to implement here is that Rama, what he does really well is he gets up in the sky and he he has to save space for six seconds and especially against <laughs> assassins now. It means don't it, go into it my safe that, space. 
but so sweet. <laughs> Especially against assassins, that mean that like guardians, the support or like the soldier is gonna be able to come in and help you out. Yeah. Whereas like if it's a if it's a fat Caprack and just standing there, what are you gonna do? So A plus. Yeah. Okay. Red Tusker, I think a lot of people are giving him a ton of value now because of that ultimate could taking you quite far on the map. And I, I, mm -hmm. I can agree to some degree, and I think Red was definitely not a bad god before. Um at the same time, I don't think he's like completely over the top broken or anything. Yep. Um, yeah, I I think he is. I would still say he's A plus. I think yeah. his acorn like really matters a lot, especially now like early yeah. game. You can kind of just run around, farm it up. That extra power he gets is pretty good. Um, Interesting say question plus, right? in that regard is going to be what happens if uh, Talaria actually becomes like the meta. And he actually falls off because of that, but that's when that happens or if that happens. Mm, so still twenty percent. Yeah, it's, it's not much Acon, slower. Right? Five, it's yeah. not much slower. Yeah, he has good base MS as well. Yeah, true, true, true. And then we have Raven. Raven previously was probably during the SPL was probably one of the or the, the, the wells. He was probably one of the highest valued guards yep. in in the game. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's changed? I'm not sure. I, I'm he's for me he's somewhere between S minus and A plus. Mm -hmm. um, I would go S minus, but I think what like what Ravana does so well is that he's this warrior that just does the assassin backline diving very well. Mm -hmm. You can build fawns on him. You can build a bit tangy. Get your brawlers. You can build damage. Um, he's never not gonna do his job. He has a very good immunity, which makes him like he counters quite a few guards because of that. Yeah. I just think he's like pretty good. Very, very nice damage. Like he doesn't really die unless you all turn around and focus him. His damage mitigation on his old is absolutely insane. They, they nerfed and that though, right? It's yeah, it's but it's still sick nerf, it's, right? yeah. I don't know. I don't. I, I, I don't actually think remember the values from the top of my head, but I know that it's got a fair bit of a decrease, especially early on. It, the thing is, if I look at this list, I think he's more like, more the likes of uh, like. Bestet and Merc, then he's like on level with Red and uh, yeah. Nike. Yeah, yeah. Oh, not Nike, sorry, Nemesis, Nemesis and Honda. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I think for all this as well, it just makes sense to put him as minus. Yeah. Because uh, I definitely think he's always going to be a good pick as well. That's the thing with Raman. Yeah. yeah. Scylla. I think Scylla is a, like. <laughs> I think Scylla was pretty trash before. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, I think she's like a little bit better off with like getting to late game a little earlier. And, you know, with. Uh, I think the, the Mage's Blessing will help her clear uh, yep. quite a fair bit in many situations. She's not like dependent on like stacking mm -hmm. Soulstone first or anything. So that's good. But how much that helps her, I don't know. I'm going to go A minus to say it straight. Like, yeah. Uh, she's not gonna do as much as a Rav, so, and she sure maybe in like low ranked or whatever, she's gonna burst a few assassins. But at least for competitive and high low rank, she's just gonna die. And like she's not never gonna be in a position to get True. a damage off. In, in low level, you don't want to see her either because if you see a low level uh, Scylla, you know what's gonna happen. She's gonna miss every oh, single yeah. ultimate. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that is true. It's very rough. Uh, Sir Cat, definitely one of the better performing <laughs> gods right now. Yeah. <laughs> I think Saket is insane because she can be played in the support role and very well in the support role right now as well because sovereignty, very nice. Pressure means a lot. Mm -hmm. She's a very good jungler. The true damage, the tanky build with like fawns is also going to do even better now, in my opinion, against hunters. Like I've, I've just played games where I'm just playing support with fawns and even though the hunters fall levels ahead of me, I can just run down and kill him. Mm. And it's not because the Honda is bad. That's like me playing against Arkel or something, and he can't do anything. So Ked is really, really strong, and I think she's S in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, that's what I mean. uh, it's just slap, slap her in there, right? Like yeah. she's, she's just. Great. Like, it's and, just literally again. She can, she can also like she's very flexible. She doesn't have to go that brutal build. She can also go like straight up uh, jungle assassin damage crit. Right now works out mm -hmm. just as well. Yeah, exactly. And and she's like. She's not only have that 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 uh, that true damage, but she's also gonna be front loaded with pen at the same time through uh, if you just build like Jones for CDR, it's all you need basically, uh, and you got your your uh, your jungle starter item and then you hit the one. It's it's so much pen, <laughs> yep. so much red. Uh, exactly. Scotty, I don't Ooh. think this meta favors Scotty. No, I don't think it favors her at all. 
No, nope. I can see that. I think early game she can like kind of stomp. Yeah. Cause pressure and trance and pen, uh, but I'd be okay with putting her in a minus. Yeah. Just throwing it out there. I don't think she's B at all. No. I don't, I don't think she's cubit level. I think once again she's also one of those who can just go into mid if all else fails. But, mm -hmm. uh, or even. <laughs> You're I don't know, solo, whatever. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. I think others just, you know, we've kind of been over this is kind of the same story as with others, only that she also doesn't have, like, she has a good escape, but it's kind of conditional. It can be very good or it cannot be good, depending on who you have to yeah. yeah. Um, Sobek. Ooh, so Sobek is this, he's a, obviously he's a flex. You can play him in solo and you can play him in uh, support. Sobek, even though he has very low clear, is actually very high pressure early on, uh, just with the way his abilities works. He's very tanky, he can kind of throw people around. And I don't want to play against a Sobek <laughs> if I want to win pressure. Um, he's overall this very solid guard, he engages very well, he peels very well, he's very good in creating space. He has anti-heal as well on his free, which I think is even is like better than ever. Mm -hmm. A lot of people underrate that. Um, just from all our tier list as well, and just with how solid of a guard so big is, I would go as high as S minus right now. Yeah, I can, um, I can definitely go with that. I, he's, I, he's I just, think especially in solo, guard, we're gonna right? see, we're gonna see a lot more solo. Exactly. Like, like, and it's it's not it's not like he's an S minus solo or an S minus support, honestly. But it's the fact that he can be played to like slow S minus high A plus level in both roles makes yeah. him super strong. Yeah. And. I think he's also one of those guards, like <clears throat> with his ultimate, with the uh, the damage, is it reduction that he gets? Uh, yeah, that can face 100%. tank a lot more damage or even crits yep. than, than others, right? Not yep. quite as good as Gap, but still good enough. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Saul. Ooh, I'm not sure, man. I think she could be very good right now. Yeah. Not, not, just like I, I'm, I'm, I want to like initially. I'm saying like A plus is my feel on her because mm -hmm. she, she has very good lane clear. Like she does well uh, mm -hmm. early on with like clearing buffs and everything. She has very high burst potential. And one thing that's really going to favor her, is she's a relatively safe mage. Yeah. Um, you can like the separate and then Aegis if someone like of the assassins goes and you you can definitely return damage as well. Sol is very strong at just standing then boxing if you don't have too much anti heal. Yeah. I would just go A plus. I think she'll be like on the likes of Nox, Isis, not quite Discordia, Janus, mm -hmm. or like Raging at all, but she'll definitely be up there. Yeah, I, I can see that. And as I really have no clue where to place her, I, I will just go with the opinion here. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Sun Wukong. Ugh. Just uh, put him in A and be done with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I guess he's not a death toll, so he didn't really get nerfed yeah. and he's still safe. He just builds Mage, Mage's Blessing yeah. now, but he's also like, he's not gonna run out of mana either way. He's like, he's there, he does his job, but yeah. nothing really changed. Maybe, yeah. maybe what's what's worth noting is that uh, his transformation, his eagle, will be pretty good yep. now with the fast rotation speed that he has. Mm -hmm. But that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but the thing is still A. Yeah. Susano, I think you had something in mind for Susano already. You sounded like you. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Susano is really strong right now because Hydras is a thing and like Jordan's is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, he does very well with like those AA cancels. Uh, he's very good jungle clear as well. Mm -hmm. um, I keep thinking he has his old passive with movement speed, but he doesn't. No, he's got the weird extra damage uh, now, which yeah. blocks on mages. Yep. I've think a plus is where yeah, I, would I can i can see that not i wouldn't put him higher than that because i from what from my experience like trying around with mage's blessing his clear wasn't all that great so you still have to go mm. with the assassin's blessing anyways so that kind of doesn't work out um but yeah i think he can definitely do well uh also his setup is really good right now and and that setup like especially like having a bit of range as an assassin with his, with the ultimate or with the mobility that he has can be really good against hunters now because they can't kill you before you're close to them. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sylvanas. Ooh. He is... I'm like, is he S? Is he S minus? I'm not sure. I think he's S minus. I think he's S minus for one reason. Uh, mm -hmm. The buffed anti-heal. Yeah. Uh, th that extra damage, if he takes that to the face, that's painful mm -hmm. you have to yeah. invest a relic for that specifically which kind of sucks but mm -hmm. i think he, he's forced like he, he, it actually procs on his whole team i would actually be like 
if that becomes a norm, I would actually play some lower because you know you can literally get bonus damage against everyone that he healed yeah. at the same time. He can't do anything about it, but we'll have to see it happen first, I guess. I think the good thing about this though is we're discussing Savannah as not being S rather than not yeah. being A plus. He's very strong in lane. He's gonna be picked a lot. Yeah. He's gonna be one of those guardians you're gonna see in like 75, 80 percent of your probably ranked and SPL games mm -hmm. just because pressure and he's just solid. Yeah. Uh, not quite Jeb, not quite Archer, not quite Fev. Obviously Hell is really far up, but that's just because I'm a Milsey and I like Hell. <laughs> And I'm very biased towards all. <laughs> but this guard, the next one on the list is Terra. And I am still mad of the way they nerfed her and how <laughs> very sad I feel like she is right now with her slow. Sure, it's better now. She was actually really insane uh, at one point because her basic attacks with a passive proc made just blessing. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they fixed that because that yep. was OP. You just start with your free little one and you just run someone down and they die. <laughs> um. I think I, in like my own Guardian, Guardian tier list, I think I put Terra in B. <laughs> and that's how much I was like, just mad. I think she's, <laughs> I think she's A now. Yeah. Uh, Terra does, still does Terra stuff. She has a great global ultimate. Mm -hmm. She still doesn't really die. Um, and overall, she's, she's not going to like set up as much as before, but it's, it's still a range stun that's fairly easy to land. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the good slow, good control. If you play really well around the wall, she can probably be A plus. But I think for like the average Terra player, and like, like I would even say myself, I, I find her as like an A guard. Oh, the self roast. No, I, I would put an A as well. I agree. <laughs> yep. Fanny boy. Everyone thinks that Thanatos is suddenly really good because of his uh, early jungle presence, clear, yep. all that kind of stuff. I think. That is correct to some degree, but at the same time, I don't think he's that good. Uh, mm -hmm. Not only because he, like, when a hunter runs him down in late game, he has very limited tools against that. He can, like, try to heal up a little bit, but he has to, he has to be the one initiating to get his damage off. And that's a 50-50 chance that happens, basically. And I think... Um, thing is in terms of in terms of uh builds what you would always see thanatos players do is they go bruiser at some point um because you kind of don't really have to invest into pen with your two uh, providing yeah. you with that but yep. again bruiser builds for most guards don't work that well especially if your only mobility tool is, is a movement speed increase you kind of you're very open out there as a target for anything. And I feel that's a yeah. problem, especially with, with the mage burst being quite heavy right now as well. And him not being able to execute everyone as easily if we see more mm -hmm. warlocks. Yeah. And like, again, the thing with Fen is like, sure, he kills squishy guards, but squishy guards definitely also kills Thanatos. Yeah. So I would, I would, it's still Thanatos though. Like, I'm, I'm like, split between a plus and a guess where i am as well I, i'll say we give him a plus we gave uh yeah. we gave susano a plus we gave butts a plus um and but i just, wouldn't just be well. surprised if he drops down to to a either yeah do you want to move our kong up a notch to a plus because mm. if i think he <laughs> is this like we can't underestimate him too hard you see i think he is a bit above average is he on the likes mm -hmm. of? Yeah, no, will... yeah, yeah, yeah. We Rob, could, we could, yeah, like rather. Yeah. Like, it's just at the same time when I'm when, like when there. I when I move Aokwang up, I'm almost tempted to move that G up as well. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, we can move Aokwang up and and that G is just more towards the front of the A list. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. All right, yeah. Morrigan. <sighs> I mean, is... she's always been good and competitive. I don't think that's yeah, suddenly going to exactly. change. Her kid still does what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, she used to make pretty good benefit of Rod, which she doesn't have anymore. Yeah. But I'm sure she'll have alternatives, especially with like, no, maybe not actually. Never mind. It's that. hard to build her right now for like yeah. the one shot. It actually is, which is like you're still getting someone out the fight, but you aren't getting the pick. Um, yeah. She's very good pressure though, Morgan. She yeah. actually has a really good level one. Yeah. Her third swing really, her re swing really hurts yeah, yeah, on yeah, guards yeah. as well. 
And I think, I, that especially, yeah, the, the I, fact I would, that I would go S minus, man. That's just yeah. how I feel like. I think, especially the fact that she's gonna be in alone in mid more gets a farm quicker, that yeah. kind of stuff that helps. And, and also, she's pretty good with the new boots as well, travelers. Yeah, she yeah. just runs around. <laughs> A good description of Morgan. <laughs> she yep. just runs around for half a team fight until she finds a target finally. And finally she's gonna find someone. <laughs> and then she's gonna get like Ankyle procked or something and then she's gonna <laughs> cry. Thor. Thor I I I I'll say it. Thor is fucking overrated. I I yeah. think Thor yeah, he's got a global ultimate, but it's not really global. The distance actually isn't that far. Uh many other assassins that do the job better than he does. I I don't think Thor's that good right now. Mm, I don't know. I, I I just still think Thor is Thor. Like at the end of the day, he mm. has his global old. He has his early poke. Like he clears buffs at a pretty fast rate as well. Mm. He's that constant threat. I would go like low A plus. I really don't want to again like place him in A because I don't think he fits in A. Mm. I think he's always gonna like he's always gonna like. I don't see him being a, a worse pick. Maybe Nasha, Dashi, like occasionally can be a better pick than him. But I, yeah, I would, I would just put like... him on the same level as them. I, uh, I think he's yeah. not. I don't. I, ha I have. I think I just have to see a Thor do well for once to to be convinced yeah. otherwise. But because we haven't seen adapting play four as an example, like yeah. ages. Maybe Anderson comes back now and brings back the Andy four. All right. Okay. We 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 put it there for Andy. <laughs> oh yes. And, and they made it A plus. <laughs> So the A A plus stands for Andy now. Um, T bird, the tough, the beak. I I think I think he's not as bad as some people think, and he's also not as good as some people think. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just an A plus guard. Yeah, he's okay. a bit above uh, done, average. Done. <laughs> it's all. It's just that like. He does its damage, but he also doesn't do damage if it's going badly, right? Yeah, like but he's he, a very he still usually gets out, so that's not. Nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Except for when there's a Thor. That's why we need Thor in the same tier. <laughs> that's true. That is true. <laughs> Tyr got a buff for mm -hmm. his power scaling on his heel. It's it doesn't matter. Like it actually, if you think that's gonna make a difference, <laughs> whatever, man. Then you just yeah, you're gonna build Tyr trends in solo. What? <laughs> He got 10% more no. scaling, so he's now going to do two more damage on his two. It's a big buff. <laughs> Watch out, you are going to die. And half of that will get mitigated as well, so it's going to be one more damage. I think, I think the true perk for Tyr is more that uh, Tyr is a lane bully and he couldn't get his job done with Death Toll Warriors being mm -hmm. dominant. Yeah. I think that helps him. At the same time, I, I, I think he's just right there with Hercules and Chalk, kind of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you don't, you don't want to like, put him quite at the height. In, 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 in A, maybe in EU, I think T has a like history of working very well and like with Death Toll being less relevant, I would go A plus, right? All right. A plus. Okay. I think he's strong. I also think he Dude, I'm I'm just gonna put him there so less people complain about him being too weak, so he doesn't get a buff. You know? Okay. Okay. I'm done with that. <laughs> at, this is just, we, at this point, we're just like hoping that guards get nerfed and buffed. <laughs> so, uh, so, so talking about that uh, Anubis guard, he was SS, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have, <laughs> we have, we have, we don't need to talk about Anubis. We have the next guard right here. Like, he's oh, you know. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not even gonna talk about it because there's no point. Ular is even better now in this meta because you're left a lot more alone. If you hit an axe on Ular, uh, you can even go like double stacking. I see some people do that. Yep. You are going to almost one shot someone and force someone back to base. And because they have to run a greater distance now, it's a lot worse for them. Uller is insane at level one. He's the best ADC at level one, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, lane pressure matters so much. Uh, he's very good late game. He's just an overall solid guard. He has insane scaling, very low mana cost, which also helps him out a lot, right? Like he has no mana cost now. Yeah. I'm tempted to go SS, but so I... What, what, what you're really saying uh, here is that Ullar has a 50% win rate and is therefore the most balanced guard in the game, as Hyrus told us. Yeah, pretty Kay. much. Um, I, I, I don't want to talk about it, man. I I just, I'm, you're just going to get me angry. I'm not <laughs> even... I'm, I, I went on my spree, I had my <laughs> call-outs, and I'll chill now. I, I'm I think, fine with I, I think I don't want to give him SS. I think I want to give him yeah. S+. I, think I don't think he's this completely super... 
busted, yeah. broken, but he's definitely fucking insane. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, <laughs> he's, he's got his matchups, especially now, that are going to hurt him. And if if we, for example, say if, if Ola dominates an early against the Hachiman, the Hachiman will still do ranged crits in mid game. Yeah. And that can yeah. hurt an Ola too, but... Mm -hmm. That's like the only matchup where I think. I think he's like he's on the ball there between being like very broken. Um, I yeah I don't know. I, I'm not I sure. Think the, aside of uh, all performance aside, he's also absolutely unfun to play against in his current state. Yeah, which is just exactly. making it worse. Like, and I don't even find him fun when I play Ula. Now I tried to support. I did my 360 challenge. I I could only land the stun if I did a 360. That was a really fun game. We lost. <laughs> I hit one out of like 20. You should all do that, Ula players. Only 360 with the stun. Bad play. <laughs> that should be a condition to play Ula every time. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I, you like, you do pop, the notification pop, uh, box pops up. You're like, I agree. And I've read the term. <laughs> Can only 360. If, like, if, you, if you hit it like without like... the 360, it just doesn't stun. It just doesn't Yeah. <laughs> you take damage yourself. <laughs> okay. Um, Vamana. <sighs> Ah, man. Huh. Huh. Uh, okay, so, so for, for summing, summing it up, as very, when we talk about Vamana, we're making weird noises because that's all you can say about him. Yeah, I think he's just A minus, man. Yeah. Like, he's not Herc level, he's not Chuck level, and it's kind of sad. Yeah. Rip game Honda Vamana, but he's just A minus. It's just yeah. how it goes, man. He's no, no flex potential either. He's not really a jungler. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean. I, I, I think really it's see. almost at this point now maybe he comes back a little bit into solo like maybe maybe uh with solos being left alone more but mm -hmm. even then he's still a, it, you'd have to run thorns and nimian and run into the hunters with your ult or something maybe mm -hmm. but then there's still anti-heal that suddenly does more damage against you so yeah thanks for that yep. <laughs> vulcan vulcan a a yeah well, again, I would have said A+, plus, but I can definitely agree with A as well. But that's yeah. just because I... Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to A+. Plus. It's just like... I think you know, I he's kind of with Ra there. That's that's a good place mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. Uh, Shibalanke. Hmm. So Shibalanke's passive is becoming a bit interesting, you know, with uh, with crit. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty exactly. cool. But at the same time... I mean, he's what also helps him is that he's babysat more, right? If you get a, if you get the support yeah. there, that helps Shibalanke too. I think he's A. Yeah, and I, I think, think that's so. high, but I think he's A. Yeah, you see, I he think... has a very great ult. It's one of the best ults in the mm -hmm. game. He does a lot of damage, mm -hmm. relatively safe. Mm -hmm. And again, as you said, like it's going to be a lot more two between, yeah. and uh, in, if you choose to in duo, and it's not going to be bad. So I think you can kind of get him to where he wants to be. Yeah. Uh, not said that I think he'll do more late game unless he's like fully stacked than an Udler or a Hachiman, but mm -hmm. he's gonna be fine. I mean, the disgusting thing is if if you go uh, if, you, if you don't go straight into crit and you just play for late game and you do like trends Shibalanke, get your <laughs> passive stacks and then build oh, crit. No. Oh, please don't. <laughs> just like I don't know how much he can actually crit for, but that that would be gross. Um, Xing Jian. Ooh, the Xing Bling. I think he's he's he's. Pretty good. <laughs> He's I, pretty Gucci. I, I like him. S, S minus. Yeah. Oh wow! I, I always said A plus. I thought like you a know plus? pretty good A plus. But I can I can I'm not for A minus. Uh, S minus. Uh, I'm not for I think he he's he's strong man. Like yeah. his one as well. Let's remember that in the crit meta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assassins as well kind of gets yeah. a bit yeah. screwed by uh, the one. Mm -hmm. And then in solo, oh. you always have that sustain. That's mm -hmm. it's very strong. And very, uh, very again, again, also one of the gods where I think, uh, when you can afford to, you can't necessarily on a solo because, especially on Shing, you often won't blink. Uh, yeah. teleport is still very nice, just popping up somewhere and coming in with that ultimate just can entirely change anything really quickly. So he's got his perks, I think. Yep, uh, Ymir. Oof. he should theoretically be better now because. Early pressure matters more, and mm -hmm. there's more walls like potential. The, the interesting oh. thing with the, with the more walls is at the same time there's more ways around the walls as well. Yeah, right? exactly. So there's it's like to... it's kind of so yeah. so. What uh -huh. what is it gonna be? <laughs> I think he is a. I think mm -hmm. he's actually better than Bacchus. Yeah, because he just pressures the lane. He still does some things. Yep. The frostbite and the ult actually kind of helped him. No matter how big of a meme people think it is, like the ten percent damage mitigation actually helps a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, like, yeah. 
Mm, I just think he'll be fine. I like he'll be he'll be decent. I yeah. don't see why you pick him or like I don't know any one above him. Uh, but I think he has his cases where he's going to be good, so he is fine. Uh, I, I'll just do this because somebody's going to come in, and otherwise uh, he'll have this case where it's really good. If you combine him with Anher, did you know that you can impale into the wall? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, it actually Are you works. sure about that? That's it actually really? works. <laughs> wow. Does yeah, it work do that. Moving on to Zeus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Ooh, Zeus. I think Zeus, I, Zeus is somebody who I uh, definitely underrated before Worlds. And then he got, got pulled out in the finals and <sighs> he hurt. And I think Zeus is someone uh, who will benefit from being alone in mid. He's got very decent lane clear, decent pressure that way. Not raging level uh, in terms of what he does, but uh, a lot of damage coming through and him being more survival at the same time is going to hurt. Uh, also, if you're going for like ticks, uh, Spear of the Magus buff also helps him in that regard. So I think Zeus is quite a bit for him going, going for him. Yeah, I think there's merit to putting him in A+. Plus. Like, uh -huh. Warlocks, Life yeah. Seal, we're gonna dead. Uh, like, I guess that's not Life Seal, but then again, like, yeah, I think he, he, again, with Assassins as well, you take a, a, a chain and you, you die. Yeah. Zeus will survive yeah. a Logiolt and he will survive a Miracle. He will die eventually, but he'll get so much damage off. Yep. Just very good. It, and if he dies in his own ult, you will die with him. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. And that brings us to the Shonger Donger. The Shonger Donger. The, the, last, the last boy. The last, very, last man standing. He, he's, he's the very fat Loki. I, I don't know what, what he does. I mean, Warlocks is nice for him. Uh, he is A, in my opinion. A? All right. Okay, where, where do you see him? Like mid still? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see him in mid. He could be a soul lane as well. Mm -hmm. But I think he is pretty okay. Like, mm -hmm. he does his damage, he's like... And like, the little bit extra tankiness actually matters now, uh, he can mm -hmm. get. Like, he's still gonna be tanky. Warlocks is good for him, um, does pretty well into Assassins. Like, his problem before was, you well, well, are you gonna fucking shongold a Kabrakan, you know? <laughs> like, whatever, man. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, ha. Well, it, let's say it's a Susano or four that's old thing or like a nemesis that's going in and you're using your stronghold, you're actually gonna do a lot of damage. I, mean, I think Nemesis nem is maybe point. not the best example of she also you're gonna have that, a problem anyways, but <laughs> I mean that's true. I mean wait what Shong is like the natural counter matchup into them. I'm surprised you didn't know that. Oh, oh. Shong actually like yeah, because Shong can stun them shield. It's really, really strong. Really? You can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. And then like Shang might take half his health from like an ordinary mold alone almost, but uh, that's insignificant. Okay. Because <laughs> he just does so much damage and he stuns the shield. So <laughs> Nem is going to die, definitely. And he's also very fast and has he's a lot very... of jumps. And his he looks very leaves. fast to me, yeah. <laughs> he, he looks like that fat kid from school, you know? <laughs> just, God. Like cheat. Whatever, man. All right. So Shang stays a meme where we put the meme in A and we'll find out what the meme yeah. does this season. I like it. Anything here we're like looking at and thinking, oh, this might have been misplayed. I think the hill is high because that's me. I think hell is high. Freya, I'm still curious to see uh -huh. how that plays out. I just haven't seen it. Um, but you can see the potential. Right, I can see the potential. Freya. Yeah, I can see the potential. Um... I think like it's pretty. There's nothing too big besides those two, really. Like, yeah. In my opinion, there's like a, so maybe a few ones where people are gonna disagree. Yeah, this is one or two lower, but I don't think there's like in I'm, general. I'm some... sure we will find people that disagree with every oh, single yeah. one of them. That's you, not the question. You, sure, you'll probably find someone where Scylla is SS man. Because <laughs> in my rank game, I just got a pentakill with one old. Wow. But they she, were did you know that Scylla always resets when she kills them? <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. Are you sure? I never have any Scyllas that does that. They just kind of tend to miss it. So I never get the experience. It's actually so my I actually, experience. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I, wonder, I, want, I actually wonder when I saw a Scylla reset the last time. I mean, that's <laughs> when I saw a Scylla the last time, but... It's a lot. It yeah, no, I, I think, I, think I, can, I can see uh, most of these being placed. I can see some mm -hmm. of them uh, possibly, you know, Somebody finding a secret strat for one of them and, and, and making them blow up. But yeah, of course. Uh, as as it stands, I'm I'm quite happy with the overall outlook. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think we got the nice pyramid shave as well, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. 
And I think, uh, again, everyone remember, this is a rough estimate. We haven't had the chance to sit down and play like 500 games and try every character and every role. Um, just make, make, like, make this is, this is probably a good, like, guideline. This is a good basic. And I'm sure if we were to go back and do this in a few months, it would look different. But I, I still think it would, like, in, in general, it will look pr like pretty similar to what we had right now. We didn't go too crazy. We didn't go like too hold held back. We have a, a lot more characters actually on the better side of A mm -hmm. than on the worst side. But I also think like power creep is a thing in spite right now with mm -hmm. objective and towers just kind of dying. It's Something kind of that, disappearing that's like... entirely and not scaling up much. I think that's yeah. that's a crucial point here. Um, this tier list doesn't necessarily have to uh, change through guards. Uh, but rather if uh, if like objective scaling, tower, yeah. uh, minion aggro, or mm -hmm. especially items, especially Deathbringer. A lot of the, the, the guards that we placed high here depend kind of on Deathbringer being super yep. strong. Uh, if that changes, that can overhaul a lot of guards. Yeah. Like Jing, Jing Mercury would go down immediately if Deathbringer mm -hmm. was reverted, for example, I think. Like, yeah. at least. Good two example. Apples. Okay. Uh, with that, thank you guys very much for watching. Again, if you haven't checked out Emil's yet, his links will be uh, over there somewhere. You'll, you'll find them. Uh, and they will be in the description or in the first comment. Uh, or you will find Emil's comment. You can also check out his Twitch. That will also be linked there. And you can also click the sub button on my channel if you want to. And thank you very much for joining me for this, Emil Z. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs> Duke Soth. Out. <laughs>